Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Master and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C. What is going on? This is uh, take two of the live stream. This is the double, the double dip, as I like to call it, tonight here on the Master and Drum. Uh, just want to make sure that everyone's seeing the show on YouTube. I oh, felt okay. like, oh, there it is. Okay, it is up and running. All right, I just want to make sure it was working. Uh, I was getting a little bit of an issue on my end, but that was probably just my computer. All right, good. So welcome everybody to the Master and Whiskey Room again. Uh, tonight we have another fun show with uh, two incredible guests. Uh, one of who is a you know an old, you know an old an OG of the Master and Drum. Let's call him David Jennings, Rare Bird One Hundred One. Uh, and then we're going to be welcoming in Bo Garrett, uh, guitarist from Montgomery Gentry, and also Wild Turkey super fan and tour guide at Wild Turkey. So we're going to bring him in soon, live from the distillery. Um, just wanted to, you know, kind of give everyone a heads up here. Now the internet and stuff isn't the greatest out there where he is. So we're working with the, with the best that we can, uh, and the best signal and the Wi-Fi that's set up at the distillery. So hopefully, um, it goes, uh, it goes pretty well tonight. Uh, if there's any freezing up or stuff, we'll, we'll try to get Bo back in and out, but uh, I think we're in a good spot right now. So I'm going to bring them on a little bit. But I do want to, you know, say hi quickly to the chat because you guys were, you know, amazing today during the, uh, if you guys tuned in earlier for the Jackie Zykin show, um, again, she was just ridiculously cool and open and honest. And, you know, we got some real fun discussions about, you know, the 117 series. So, you know, just, you know, the fact that I, I got Jackie Zykin to say the words, but a pecan just made my entire fucking week. <laughs> I'm just saying it now. <laughs> so let me say hi to, uh, let's see, Chris Buzalensi in the chat, Ryan Tarpey, Scotty Tuhati's here. What's up, my bourbon journey? The other half of Mash and Journey. Uh, Boomer Wisconsin is here. Whiskey Wiggle, Tim Evans. He just dropped the fight out super chat. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Uh, of course it's Cheech Artelino's here. He's back. It's his birthday. Everybody wish Cheech a happy birthday. Uh, Susie Hansen is here. How you doing, Susie? Uh, who else we got? We got Jim Muller is here. Cool runnings in the house. Bourbon Battalion, my buddy Bobby. What's going on, man? Tammy Brennicky is here. What's up, Tammy? Donald Rance, the Irish Whiskey Yoda. Yes, he is here. That's right. Uh, Pop em, Don't Watch Him's in the house. What's up? Go check out Pop em, Don't Watch Him's, uh, channel. Uh, Sugar Kitty's here. Hey, Bourbon Bites, what is up, Clifton? Was hanging out with Clifton on his uh, on his chat last night on Discord. That was a lot of fun. Uh, let's see who else we got. We got DC. What's up, Daniel Carter? Uh, he says Happy Birthday or Bappy Birthday <laughs> to Cheech Artelino. Definitely, yeah. Cheech has a new channel too uh, called Whiskey Encore. So go uh, subscribe. I don't know if he's put out any content yet, but I'm waiting. What the hell, Cheech? Hurry up. Uh, Christopher David is here. Uh, AM65 is in the house. Tom Flanagan. Uh, and a bunch of you guys coming in. Top Dog, I see. Jason Coates is back. <laughs> Jen Artelino, the other half of Cheech Artelino. SG Flying High. A bunch of people. Mr. Whiskey Shits just dropped a super chat as well. Uh, happy birthday, <laughs> Cheech Artelino. We're going to give away something tonight uh, in honor of Cheech's birthday. We'll see what it is. Uh, I have a few ideas in mind. Um, so any uh, super chat you guys put in might give away a couple things, maybe another set of glasses, maybe I have a couple store picks, I might give away one of those. But without further ado, let's bring in our friends of the show right now. Let's give it up for David Jennings. Hey, man. What's up, David? Not much. Just sipping on a little Rare Breed Rye. Sipping on Rare Breed Rye. I would expect no less from you, buddy. <laughs> uh, hey, that was a great... Uh interview you had with uh jackie earlier today i enjoyed that yeah yeah me too she's uh she's always so like open and honest and she's just incredible when she comes on so and, who would uh, ever who would have ever thought outside of birthday bourbon that an old forester release would have people lined up at 3 a.m <laughs> that's just blows right. my mind <laughs> I, I think i think uh jackie underestimates her power honestly i i think so too she's very humble yeah. So when you and you combine something new, that's Jackie's like and signatures on it. Uh, I think the taters are going to tape. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope that, you know, maybe they develop that into something. It might not be the exact product, but something 
ongoing with her name on it. That would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, from what it sounds like, it will be. Uh, my, the, the, the best part about it that I really enjoyed was I think, you know, obviously the first uh, the first release, they really wanted to get a lot of, you know, PR uh, about it because it was a big deal. Yep. Um, and now she said pretty much the future releases, they're not going to talk about it too much, but they're just going to kind of make them available as they become available at the distillery. Uh, and so if you're ever so lucky to walk in the distillery, you might see the newest expression of 117 on the shelf. Cool deal. Rather than, you know, PRing it to death and then all the the taters jumping all over it and waiting online at three in the morning. Yep. Yep. Uh, so speaking of bourbon that uh, the taters tend to stay away from, we're talking turkey tonight, our favorite subject. Uh, and we're going to welcome in our another special guest. Uh, he is the lead guitarist for Montgomery Gentry. Uh, and he's not only that, but he is also a Wild Turkey super fan and is also a tour guide at Wild Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in the man, the myth, the legend. It's Bo Garrett. There he is. Bo, what's up, man? How you doing, Bo? Hey, what's up, Bo's? Not much. <laughs> Sipping Not... some turkey. <laughs> well, I'm doing all So, uh, can y'all get on that in? We yeah, can we, hear you. A little yeah, broken up. We can hear you. Okay, so, oh, there can. you go. I think I think your your signal is probably going to bump in and out all night. So just go with it. <laughs> oh, uh oh, oh man! Oh, uh, already we lost him. <laughs> uh, sipping on Wilderness Trail single barrel bottle and bond. Happy birthday, Cheech! Thanks, Eric. Uh, let's see. Zachary Jones, Tater's going to Tate. Call me loaded fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh me so i guess he's a bona fide tater <laughs> yeah he did he he kind of went with it <laughs> oh he's back let's get him back in here um all right he's almost back there he is there he's back there you go yeah much better i think <laughs> is that better than you yeah we're sounding okay man no okay so, uh, so Bo, okay, tell us. Uh, there Start you go. So, so, Bo, where are where are you at in the uh, distillery right now? I'm standing right at the bottom of the ramp that takes you up to the Angels View. Oh, the Angels View. Okay. And how long have you been a tour guide at Wild Turkey now? Yeah. Yeah. How, how long have you been a tour guide at Wild um, Turkey now? Three, four years, maybe three. Three, four years. About three, four years. So, so why, so why wild turkey? What turned mm -hmm. you on to wild turkey? What turned you on to wild turkey while you were out there playing guitar from Montgomery Gentry, and then you wanted to become a wild turkey tour guide? Well, for me, um, wild turkey. So I live about six minutes from here, um, and obviously had that horrible tragedy that went down um, with Troy Gentry mm -hmm. and when that happened I was kind of sitting there my, my wife was the one that found out that there was an opening over here and um, I came over here just looking for something to do fell in love with it and I'm still here that's all yeah so for those of you guys that don't know so Troy Gentry the other half of Montgomery Gentry he uh he lost his life in a helicopter crash in 2017, unfortunately. And since then, Bo's been doing these tours uh, since uh, you know at that same time. Um, so, what 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 would you describe your your tour style to be like? Are you you kind of go by the book? You go off the script? Or what what's your style of giving tours now? <laughs> <laughs> There is a book, uh, and uh, no, I um, I try to make people leave feeling like we had a conversation, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to making them feel like they're out there with somebody who's who is who is literally just regurgitating the information. I, I'm passionate about this, and I care about it, so uh, I wanted yeah. to leave here going, man, that was a good time. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I mean, what, how often do you walk in and Jimmy's sitting in the, uh, the clubhouse down there? Oh, good grief, man. Before all of this, the world kind of shut down. He was in here almost every day. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy's amazing, man. He's still still doing He'd it. Sit over still. in the corner and have conversations, and yeah, yeah. The fact that he's still doing it at his age, just hanging out with everyone. Yeah, and, and to watch him in a. Yeah, David. David, when's the last time that you uh, that you walked in and he was hanging out there? Sorry, I was muted there. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I muted. was trying to help with. You know, any kind of background noise or anything. But uh, <laughs> 2019, May 2019, and that was wonderful. It was a fantastic experience. And uh, I look forward to doing it again yeah. as soon as this garbage gets behind us. Yeah, for sure. Um, Sugar Kitty says, if we take the tour, will he play for us? <laughs> he wants to know if Bo will play for you. <laughs> I get asked that more. I get asked than you would imagine, actually. Oh, do you? Okay. Do so. Do people when they walk in? Do they know? You know, among, did, do they know Bo Garrett, the guitarist from Montgomery Gentry, or do they just know you as this is the Wild Turkey tour guide, the cool ass tour guide I've that seen we got more today. than one Montgomery Gentry. Yeah. Um, I've seen more than one Montgomery Gentry shirt since I've been here. Oh, well, that's cool. So I think people know that you're there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but this is more so about uh, wild turkey. I mean, I never mentioned what I did for a living. I'm, I spend all my time talking about Eddie and Jimmy. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I have time. So what is it what is it like kind of working with Eddie and Jimmy and and talking to them on a regular basis whenever you can like when you see them and and I mean you've told me a couple stories on how you know Eddie will just be hanging out and you know kind of pour you a bourbon here and there what's it like working with those guys I mean you're I mean you're kind of amongst you know bourbon royalty you know Yeah I think the weird part for me is that um I've been around some of these old guys in the business and some of the newer guys in the business. The, you know, the Russell family, and as far, you know, even before that with the No family, it's they're like friends. So it's, it, I didn't realize what a big deal they actually were until I saw other people react to them, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you know, whiskey guys and turkey guys that know who they are, they are. They're kind I mean, of – Jimmy's yeah, a bona fide rock star. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. Definitely. Yeah, he's like the Pied Piper of bourbon. Anywhere that guy goes, people are going to follow, you know. Um, let's see. Uh, and, and I love watching Jimmy react or interact with people. There's, yeah. there's no strangers. No, and, and, the, and, and he loves to have a good time. Jimmy is like a 13-year-old trapped in an 86-year-old man. Uh, <laughs> he, he told one lady in here one time when she asked if he was Jimmy Russell, he told one lady, he said, she asked him if he was Jimmy Russell. He said, nope, I'm the janitor, and I'm waiting for you to leave so I can start mopping. <laughs> <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like him. That's awesome. Um, Tom Flanning has a good question. Ask Bo, oh, if PV, ask Bo if PV was a wild turkey bourbon, what would it be, Gibson or Fender? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I Firebird my whole career, so oh, there you go. Gibson Firebird. Gibson Firebird, there you go. Good question, Tom. Uh, Mike Dallas says, just have to share a bottle of old fits tonight for under a hundred. So OF1920 joined the OF live stream at that video made this pour even better. Uh, awesome, Mike. Thanks for, thanks for uh, hopping in. That's awesome. 
So, so Bo, do you want to see if you could try, you know, moving along the path and see how, how it goes? The, uh, the ramp. Cross your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right, I don't know if you guys can. Let me. Uh... He's still moving. We still see him. Can you yeah, still see me? We yep. still see you. We'll see you, man. Oh. Well, I don't want you to see me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, geez. Well, whiskey will get us through this, Jason. Right. <laughs> you will. I'm trying to take you upstairs, dear, if we can make this happen. All right. There you go. Hey, thanks, Jerry G. Appreciate that. Well. Am I still there with you? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Good to see that. This is like a it's like a Stanley Kubrick kind of like <laughs> shot here. <I> don't... <laughs> Let me see. Can I make him no, how do I make him bigger? Yeah, look at that. That's the so that's the ramp. That's all it's kind of dark now. Yeah, and the VC going up there to where they have the old still. Yeah. All right, he's coming back in now. Hold on a second. Yeah, like Resident Evil. There he is. All right, Bo, you're back. Here I am. Now, what I want to do, good. Maybe I'll just stay up. I wanted to show you guys this old steel if I can get the work for him. Okay. And just turn around and you can see it behind me. I don't know. Can you see that still at all? Oh, there it is. We see the still. You see the still behind me? Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. The internet is just not cooperating tonight. That's the, you know, if he jumps back on, just, just uh, tell me. That's the old still from the Rippy Brothers Distillery. So that was... Uh, all you know that distillery was torn down uh just prior to 2011 when they launched the yeah, new that, distillery that yeah and that, well, that still looks huge right yeah it's it's uh there you go there's that still look at that thing so so did they refurbish that still to get it kind of back up or did they kind of leave it as it was can you i can see you yeah we can see you Bo. Uh, yeah, it'll take on a different color. The, the patina will it'll be more, more like a purple or whatever, you, you know, depending on what you're, you perceive that color as um, when it's actually in use. So, yeah, they cleaned it up really nice. Yeah. Say thanks to Kilco. Hope to get to Kentucky someday to visit as many distillers as possible. I need as much wild turkey as humanly possible. <laughs> <laughs> You can never have too much. I forgot. Is that is that the still that's like? It's I don't know. What one of their stills is like? Isn't it like twenty feet around in diameter or something like that? Well, they they, they only have one active still. Yeah, uh, that's so that's a retired still. So that's yeah. the still that that Jimmy trained on. So that that's the original still. The that still. That, that's still that Jimmy trained on. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. man. Yep. Yeah. Look at that thing. Yeah. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. We can hear you, man. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, I don't know. David may have already told you this while I was fighting with the Wi-Fi here. I'm, you go I'm, ahead, bud. Start sending smoke signals to you guys, and then you could. <laughs> um, that's this is the actual. I'm telling you, man. Um, so this is the actual still that made that Master Skeet Seventeen. It's a bottle in bond. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep, that's it. Yeah, anything that was before or pre-2010 would have come off this bad boy right here. Wow, yep. so, they didn't, so they retired that still not that long ago. That's interesting. They did. Um, mm -hmm. 
tell I love the interview with Jackie. So, Always love anything while turkey. Tells you how, tells you how durable <laughs> Jimmy is. They could retire the steel, but they can't retire him. <laughs> that's yeah. a good. That's a good point, Bo. <laughs> Uh, Jason, what's on your table? Uh, so this is the Wild Turkey 13 father and son release. That was a this it it was supposed to be a, a retail only. Uh, this is my first time trying it tonight, so I figured I'd take it out for this uh, live stream. Hefty bottle too. Nice. Yeah, this thing is nerf. This is a big liter bottle. Mm -hmm. It's a good pour too. Yeah, it is. You can probably see me way better than you want to, but at least the Wi-Fi is working up here, so I'm going to stay here. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. That's a lot better, Bo. That's a lot better, man. Yeah, I could actually see you moving now. You're not yeah. like a, you're not like a robot. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, Bo, when you're uh, – As when long you're as you can see this, I'm happy. That's all we I can, We can see. Yeah, we can see. So, Bo, when you're walking around the grounds, uh, what's, what's your favorite part of uh, – What's your favorite part of the distillery? Is that you have a favorite? You have a favorite warehouse you like to go visit and walk through? Absolutely, I love to go into Warehouse A. Um, warehouse A. Obviously, the first one that was built here. You know that thing dates all the way back, back to eighteen ninety four. Um, so you've got that going about that a young Jimmy Russell would have walked into. Oh, just when I thought it was going well. Yeah, so so that Rick House A that he's talking about, yeah. uh, that was the only warehouse for, for some time there yeah. uh, at Wild Turkey. Uh, and that was owned originally by J.P. Rippey, James P. Rippey, which is T.B. Rippey's brother. He sold it to his nephews, T.B. Rippey's sons, and then they turned it into Rippey Brothers. They were shut down at Prohibition open back up and of course the you know rick house has expanded from there but a is just special because it's that old uh timber it's just was built so long ago yeah for sure uh bo's on the move uh he's walking down that pathway it's pretty cool you can always take great pictures in that hallway yeah, it's that, so hall cool. that hallway is the greatest yeah mm -hmm. Um, how do you whiskey, uh, Dan? Uh, love the turkey watching live here in Chicago at a cigar shop while sipping on Masters Keep 17. Awesome, man. Yeah, cheers to that. Uh, let's see here. I came back downstairs, see if that helps at all. Yeah, you'll have to tell the, uh, the Lawrenceburg internet provider to throw a couple more logs in the fire and get that, that Wi Fi signal up. You gotta get, yeah, I gotta get it up. Not yeah. feeding the hamsters, man. They quit. <laughs> <No>. the hamsters. <laughs> Horses are asleep or something. Yeah, get the mules back out there. Yeah, my goodness. Now, uh, Bo, you grew up. You grew up in uh, in Kentucky, right? Aren't you? Uh, you're from um, you're from Floyd County. Is that correct? Kentucky, yeah. Yeah. That is yeah, correct. Bro. Yeah, so you literally grew My up with my father was actually uh whiskey knows with a four nine 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 super chat. Hey guys, cheers from East Tennessee. What's up, man? Cheers. Uh we're gonna put what, what, so real quick, what do you think about this thirteen year, Jason? It does remind me a little bit of the, uh, I mean, it, it's more of a classic turkey for me, I think. I mean, you got all the great vanilla, the citrus. Wait, Bo's back here. Let me add him back here. All right, Bo's back. Where Where is he now? I am literally almost leaned up on the router, so I, I don't know what to tell you here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much wearing it at this point, you know. Um, but Well, you're a true pro, Bo. When I lost you the last time. <laughs> you're right. Um, 
I did. I grew up in eastern Kentucky up in the mountains in Floyd County. And it's kind of part of the whole journey for me. My grandfather was actually a shiner. Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, Didn't know that. You, you could say it's in my blood literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, you you really grew up all around and near it. And uh, the fact that, I mean, did, did you ever learn how to how to shine or, or distill or do anything like that? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's so that's a yes <laughs> not not nothing like what nothing what like what these guys i mean this is a, i got here i was like i don't know anything man this is bizarro yeah the minute you think you know everything that's going on you find out you didn't know anything to start with <laughs> There you go. Uh, Sunday evening Scott says, call Jimmy. He's done everything there. Get him in for tech support. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. You really cell phones and just call each other is what he would do. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, Mark Royland. Hey, guys, what's up with the Wild Turkey 101 Rye? I got a bottle last year and haven't been able to find one since. Love that bottle. Um, something interesting on that, and Bo might be able to clarify, but – Folks are finding 750s of 101 rye, and I haven't seen a 750 of 101 rye since 2011. Um, it's been yeah. in liters, so so mm -hmm. obviously things are getting, uh, you know, things are changing up, I guess. Right, Bo? Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Uh, starting to see some changes around. So I've so seen a couple of those posts myself, actually, where people are starting to find those now. Mm -hmm. So So does that mean – the rye is being produced more that they can put it in 750s or they're just getting away from the one liter bottles i'm just trying to trying to figure out the the um the mindset no my understanding is that there's been a high demand for the 101 rye and uh, it, it is obviously harder to find that liter bottle because it's a bar and restaurant bottle right uh, mainly yep. um so it, it, and and that's the exactly good right. News Bo. There is that there's there's more people wanting the one on one round. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, when the, when they discon they didn't discontinue one on one rye completely. They kind of had a pause there because the rye stocks weren't there to keep one on one rye going. Uh, so they created the eighty one rye mm -hmm. and uh, kind of paused right. on one on one rye for about a year or so. When they put 101 rye back out, it was in select markets in a liter bottle because, as Bo mentioned, that's a restaurant, you know, bar bottle. Uh, and certain states would get them for retail, but not very many. And now that uh, the rye stocks are kind of catching up there, I mean, look, you've got rye that was made at the new distillery now filling these bottles because um, the rye comes out at a little bit less age than the, the bourbon. So uh, it, I think that we're only going to see more and more rye. Uh, and whether the liter bottles stick around, I don't know. I would assume so because, like, like, you know, those are great for bars. But, uh, you know, I think more, more people are going to see them in 750s. And I don't know what's going to happen with the 81 rye. I haven't heard anything. I assume that's going to continue. But I w it wouldn't surprise me if it went away. I, I just I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of rye, yeah, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, we only yeah. we only do rye about twice a month here, so. Oh, twice a month is when it's being stilled. Okay, which is a lot more than what it used to be. Well, for it sure. used to be you twice a year. Be, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Uh, because you know, I mean, Jimmy wasn't a guy known for making rye. Right. Yeah. How does how does how do you think Jimmy feels about rye whiskey nowadays? <laughs> I don't think he feels about it at all. Do you, babe? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I... <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm gonna let David answer that. That was a good answer. We'll leave it <laughs> Jimmy, um, from what I've been told, Jimmy, he's, he, he's still he'll, a bourbon he'll taste. Man. I don't know. He's a bourbon guy. He'll taste rye, but he spits it. I mean, it's not his favorite drink, and. <laughs> uh, I once had a uh, person kind of call me out on it and say, well, wait a minute. You know, how could somebody that doesn't like rye make a good rye? 
And I'm like, well, you know, he just doesn't prefer it. And there's this scene in, in the movie, Quigley Down Under, and it's going to spoil the movie. So if you want to watch Quigley Down Under, don't listen to what I'm saying. But uh, he's a rifle guy. Like the whole movie, he just uses a long rifle. He's a sharpshooter. Mm-hmm. This is set in the, in, well, it's in Australia, but it's, it's you know, old West times. And uh, he's hired, you know, by a guy to kind of clean up his ranch. Anyway, Um it, it it ends up being a lot more nefarious and he realizes that the guy that owns the ranch is, is wanting him to actually hunt people. It's, it's, it's awful. But anyway, uh, the end of the movie, he kind of faces off against this bad guy and the bad guy, you know, he likes to use sidearms and he, you know, he, he throws the, the rifle in, in front of him and he says, you know, we're going to, we're going to have this duel if he can get to his rifle in time, you know, before he can draw his pistols and then he changes his mind and puts a pistol in his, his belt. And uh, they draw and Quigley kills the bad guy. And he's like, wait a minute, I, I thought you didn't know how to, you know, shoot a pistol. And he said, uh, never said I couldn't shoot a pistol. I just I just don't prefer them. <laughs> and uh, that, that's the uh, that's the kind of analogy I give there with Jimmy and Rye. It's like just just because he doesn't prefer Rye doesn't mean he can't make a killer Rye. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tammy Branicky. Yeah. And, and Wild Turkey Rye, too, as as you know about wild turkey rye, it's the Kentucky style rye, so it's it's not uh, a super high rye content in that rye mash bill. So, yeah, right, barely legal, as they say. Yeah, uh, Tammy Brennicky, Jason, your content is yeah. unbelievable. Rare bird, thank you for sharing your knowledge and inside info. Both, thank you for joining our stream tonight. Absolutely, um, thank you, Tammy. Uh, we got. Bourbon Battalion comes Thank in. You, Holy Jamie, shit. I wish I could have been here more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, fifty dollars super chat from Bobby at Bourbon Battalion. It says, "My family is from Floyd County, Kentucky, and my journey started with wild turkey." Cheers, you glorious bastards! <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, Matt Junick, uh, are you going to jam with Bo tonight? Let's get some whiskey to live music going. Rare Bird on vocals. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. What are you? Are you telling us you got to? You got a singing voice there? I've got a few songs. I, I, I'm not going to do them tonight, but <laughs> I'm, I might have recorded a few things in, in my history. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, D. Hutch. I would imagine with like that Southern draw, you got like a nice little country album that's out, right? Little... No. It, you know, I grew up in a time where, you know, oh, so, alternative so, rock was the thing. And I was going to so, say, so, so death metal for David Redbird one No. <laughs> No. I don't know. Okay. I, I appreciate Metallica. There's oh, I mean, it would not... be so awesome to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty diverse, but uh, yeah, I've I've done a few things in my life. Hey, Whiskey Mountains is here. What yeah, is I started up? out playing bluegrass, so I mean, I, I I enjoy. You know, I don't think there's a single music that uh, genre that I, I can't find something I appreciate. You know, I, I I tend to, you know, find the the beauty in all types of music. Uh, Bourbon Wrench says I caught James Hetfield's guitar, yeah, yeah. from Wild from Metallica. There you go. You know, um, I met James one time. Really? Um, and it was, yeah, it was the the coolest experience. We were doing a program that was called CMT Outlaws. Uh, okay, and somebody I guess had gotten James to make an appearance on this show, so he did like a Metallicaized version of an old Waylon Jennings song. But he was backstage, and I was just like, you know, I'm not letting this moment pass. I'm going to go over and ask <laughs> myself, you know, like he's going to remember who I am anyway. Um, <laughs> so I got to meet him. He's a he's a big dude, man. Yeah, I, I, I've, you know, I've never seen Metallica live, but I've always had that kind of, you know, vision that he's a, a pretty tall fella. Yeah, Nick he Foles. Uh, yeah, Nick Foles says I was getting heavy rap vibes from Red Bird. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not as well versed on rap, but I, I mean, I appreciate <laughs> a good jam every now and then. Yeah, I feel like David can freestyles a great song about Wild <laughs> Turkey at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe me and Bo will have to sit down and write that one one day. Yeah. 
Emily Chambers, the mash and drum, mash and jams needs to be there. You go. Thing. There you go. <laughs> mash and jams. How about that? Jams. Yeah, That'd I like cool. that. It's a good idea. That's a cool name. So, Bo, like, who's the most like in your mind? Did you ever get to meet any of your musical heroes uh, at all? Like, once you started touring with Montgomery Gentry, was there any musical heroes that you had that you got to meet in person? And what was that like? didn't just get to meet uh I, I got to be on stage with leonard skinner wow oh okay oh <laughs> right at the good part oh he's teasing us with the leonard skinner <laughs> uh, i don't i can't carry this one man i could carry the history ones i, I could, i'm just gonna have to make <laughs> stuff up none of us can this is Bo all got called. to do the the guitar solo on Freebird. Yeah, there was, was a standing ovation. This is all Bo. All right, Bo's back. I, I we got to hear the Leonard Skinner story. <laughs> uh, oh no, no, I was like in come on. Of that story a whole lot better than what I told was Kale. Um, um, no, we we did again another TV show and we did it with them, um, and it was basically two uh, acts from different genres that really admired each other, so to speak, if you want to say that. And um, we did a show with them where they played Hillbilly Shoes with us and we had tunes with them. Nice. Um, so, you know, it was, it was very cool to, for me personally, to get to stand shoulder to shoulder with Gary Rossington. I was like, holy crap, this is really happening. <laughs> uh that, that would be awesome after going on tour with you Bo, what else would you suggest i see at wild turkey also boomer boomer went on tour with you uh at wild turkey what else would you suggest he sees well you've already seen it all if you went on my tour so. <laughs> <laughs> come back <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah come back um jimmy's about what would be left on that answer um Oh yeah, I would agree. Drive Boomer, Boomer yeah. yeah, I would say Boomer was constant. You're just gonna have to go to the warehouse. This is cool. Yeah, you're just gonna have to go back every day, Boomer, until you actually run into Jimmy one day. So, Bo, I got a question for you. Um, okay, do you think that the current tour experience will ever be kind of expanded into anything? you know, larger and, and, and that could be multimedia, that could be sites to see, you know, and, and this isn't, you know, not that what you have going on right now isn't great. I'm just wondering, has there been any talks about doing something else, doing something more? I, well, honestly, I think the sky's the limit, uh, depending on what, um, what they decide they want to do here. Uh, so, um, We've, we've got a beautiful grounds. There's, there's so much to see around here. So, um, like I said, man, opportunities are all over the place as far as that goes. Yeah, I would have to agree. There, there's so much ground to cover. There's so much history to talk about. Um, and, and I know that you put your heart in, into it as well as a lot of your time researching it and prepping for it and having that conversation with visitors like you, you talked about earlier in, in the uh, show here. Uh, but I, I do think that, you know, there, there's a lot more that could be done. Of course, that takes time and money and, and getting people to agree to things. And, and uh, you know, it, it's not something that you, you can just do yourself. But I hope that one day that happens because it, it the, the, you know, the brand deserves it. You know, the legacy deserves it. And, and I would love to see that down the road. I came here, you know, just to do tours. And that's basically what I started out doing, uh, was just giving tours. And technically now the title that I, that I have now is called brand builder. So that is everything from guest experiences, tastings, uh, VIP experiences, whatever might come about, um, being a part of that. So, who knows what else might happen beyond that? We'll just, you know, I'm here and I'm game, man. 
You feel like you feel like uh, Wild Turkey if they kind of diversify their tour experience, like kind of like what Buffalo Trace does with the Hard Hat Tour, the Ghost Tour. Maybe maybe Wild Turkey could do kind of a, I don't know, I don't know how they could work it because you know the the distillery is so big and so vast. It'd be it'd be cool to, I don't know, get a little bit more of an insider, insider, uh, uh, you know, I guess experience there, as you would say, just. Something a little bit more in depth into what the you know just a regular tour would be. If you give people that kind of access, um, I'm not saying like give them you know the keys to the garage or anything. I'm just saying, you know, give them a little bit something extra on top of the virtual on top of the tour they're already getting. I think that could definitely drive some more attendance. Oh, it, it could be a blast. Anything like that's always fun to me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so Ben Lagar is asking me. I just bought a bottle for you. I haven't seen any ghosts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so a ghost tour is probably out. Yeah. As long as there's bourbon aging there, Thanks, Matt. the ghosts are not going to mess with you. Yeah. They're good. They're set. But if you start closing stuff down, then you got a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sunday exactly. evening scotch says he poured some Walter Kentucky spirit from Rick House S. Those S barrels are around right now, and if you find one, folks, buy it. It's so damn good. I will have to agree. Yep. Uh, Marty Ziegler, right don't cross the hill from me right now. Marty Ziegler said, "Don't drink with Bo. He'll leave you face down in the grass." <laughs> There's a story there, I'm sure. <laughs> There's a story there. Oh, we can, we're, we're, oh nah, I ain't talking. We're losing you, Bo. We're losing you. <laughs> My signal's going away again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great yeah i agree with uh i agree with sunday evening scotch here uh brand build is a great title for Bo. i know he's doing great things on site and he's killing on instagram those maps yeah those maps you put out on the on the rick houses was awesome i mean for people to see where these specific uh warehouses are located especially for you know the bourbon geeks and the wild turkey heads that really you know, they really hunt out, you know, those different warehouses and where to, and to see where they are. It's pretty cool. Well, honestly, uh, that whole thing came about with, uh, because of a conversation between David and I. So yeah. That's well, it, and I, I can't take, those. I can't take full credit because I had a lot of my Patreon supporters asking about it. Yeah. And so I reached out to you. So it, it it's not just me. It's the whole community was, wanting that and I appreciate you providing that because that yeah. gives people a visual reference. And I know that it, there's probably a lot of folks out there who are new to bourbon or maybe not quite as into it as some of us geeks are. And they're probably looking at that and they're like, what the hell's this? Like, why does this even matter? But if you get into it, it means something. It really means something to know where these Rick houses are. Uh, plotted out through the campus. And it does. Uh, John, Jonathan, Mason, Jonathan Mason here. He got a Kentucky Spirit Warehouse G. It's great. What's the overall perception of Long Branch? I'll always be able to thank you for getting me into bourbon. And I think that's I think it. That's, um, that's it. Nice. That's the thought. Mm -hmm. That is the thought on Long Branch to get you into, if not just bourbon, into the wild turkey category. But I, I think that, and I don't want to speak out of turn if Bo has something to say, but one thing I, I realized about Long Branch, and it, it's taken me a little while to kind of get there with it, but what it's offering you is, you know, a well-aged bourbon at a lower proof point with a little bit of something extra to the flavor. So you're going to yeah. get that eight years uh, at an 86 proof, but it's going to have this extra, you know, uh, enhancement from the mesquite. But it it, it does offer something to not just someone starting out, which is a great thing, you know, for Long Branch, you know, uh, to provide that experience. But I'll be honest, I enjoy it, you know, myself, like, especially in warmer weather. I, if I'm I going would, outside, I mean. Took the, took the words out of my mouth. I think Long Branch is like a perfect summer burden. There's something about it. It tastes mm -hmm. like, it tastes like sweet tea to me. That's right. It's like perfect in the summer. Yeah. There, there's. You know, you're you're not going to want to go out there in the heat drinking high proof whiskey all day. So, yep. uh, to have like a, a lower proof bourbon that maintains that mature flavor profile, um, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to have. 
Thanks, Brooklyn four five six. Yeah, I had a uh, I had a bartender who, uh, or actually the mixologist from like one of the big bars in um, <laughs> New York City, on one of my tours one day, and he hung around later uh, to uh, talk to me a little bit. He was telling me about a drink that he had done, and he said he could. They moved as fast as he was able to make them, where he did uh, a spin on the old fashioned. And what he was using was the Long Branch and American honey to make it. Hmm. Well, do you have that recipe? Because I would love to try that. I've tried it. I'm huh? sure it's, I'm not doing it as nearly as well as he did, but you know. I'm gonna play with that. <laughs> I, I'm serious. That that sounds good. Yeah, he said you obviously had to go a little heavier than you would with a simple syrup because simple syrup is so sweet. Uh, uh, but it, it was what I've been able to do has been really interesting with it. Yeah, I I actually like doing. You get some nice homemade lemonade, and then you throw some wild turkey American honey in there, just to top it off and mix it around. That'd it's, be good too. Yeah, I have. That's Jimmy's I, I, lemonade. That's the way Jimmy drinks his lemonade. Yeah, I was making those for my. Uh, I was making those for my family when they were here in the summertime, and we went. They they went through an entire bottle of American honey like that. <laughs> you know, I had I had another great story about a, a visitor we had with the American honey. We had a, a lady Thanks, visit one day from wine country, and she wound up on my tour as well, and pretty much began to tell me before we ever got out to the bus that she was not going to, she drank wine. So she wasn't going to like anything that we did. Um, and she told me, she said, uh, I don't drink whiskey. And I was like, well, that's great. Cause we don't make it. Um, which went completely over her head. Uh, but she got back here and when we tried the American honey, uh, she was like, Oh, I love this. I can't find the alcohol in it and just threw the rest of it back. I was like, keep <laughs> drinking it like that and it'll find you. <laughs> and then you'll find her in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Oh, man. But she loved it that, and she didn't expect to. She expected to hate it. Yeah, I, I, I know a few folks that they swear by American honey. That is their thing. And it not it interesting that, that Jimmy started this whole flavored bourbon thing? Like, you know, you, there's so many flavored bourbons now. Um, and I hate to even call them bourbons. I mean, yeah. they're liqueurs, but, but you know what I mean? They, they're bourbon based liqueurs and yeah. Jimmy started that whole thing. Uh, and I don't think that most of the world even knows that. Yeah. I make yeah, sure that's... that when, when I meet people. <clears throat> no, go ahead, Bob. I, I stress that on my tour that Jimmy, Jimmy was there first. Yep. Yep. Uh, Whiskey No says, what a great day on Mastin' Drone. Thanks, JC, for all the efforts. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's been a uh, it's been it's been a fun day. I mean, first Jackie's eye came, now we have Bo and, and David on. It's uh it's it only goes down from here, everybody. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's holding together pretty well. I mean, you got Bo. Don't say that. And, the Wi-Fi will do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going, don't jinx it. The Wi-Fi is going good right now. Let's not hope it this, turns This off. is evidence that that Bo is a touring musician because <laughs> I'm sure shit fell apart on a semi-regular basis <laughs> and you had to just grab the gaffer tape and just keep going. Yeah. So uh, Man, um, so, it was, I've had my, my belt pump go down so many times and I'm, I'm literally on stage in front of 50,000 people playing freaking air guitar because my guitar's not working. <laughs> uh, waiting for somebody to come and fix it. Oh, that's great. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so I want to um, imagine. I want to I want to kind of call out my giveaway tonight. So if you guys super chatted, I'm going to throw a because it's a turkey night. I'm going to give away this uh, Russell's Reserve uh, store pick that I have. That's absolutely delicious. This is my second bottle. I haven't cracked it yet, so I figured I'll let someone else enjoy it. This is a CNF, and it's a mm. real it's a real delicious, funky turkey. So um, this will be up for grabs tonight, and uh, I will also do another giveaway. Well, I'll give away one of my Mash and Drum uh, Curve uh, bourbon glasses, and with that, I will throw in a sample – of the Wild Turkey 13. And 
a sample of the Wild Turkey 2003. Wow, so, that's, uh, that's a nice giveaway. Yeah, so that'll be. How do so I that'll get in be, on this now? <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be the giveaway tonight, guys. You're gonna get one person will get this pick, and another person will get a match and drum curved bourbon glass and a sample of each of these two uh, really rare, you know, wild turkey releases. So uh, any super chat tonight will get you in the running. So have at it. Um, yeah, let's see. Great stuff. Super chats away. Yeah, 2003 is awesome. I love that stuff. I mean, it gets better. I'm going to crack that shit open again soon because it's so damn good. Um, Whiskey Mountains, why do you think musicians are such a party – such a part of the whiskey world seems like a lot of hand in hand it's kind of cool that's a good question for you Bo. you thought you thought that was a typo but it actually was not party was the correct word yeah i think, <laughs> I think you're i think you're right <laughs> <laughs> i think a lot of it you start out in in as far as the music business and my friends and, and how i got into it i think you, your influences, the people you look up to, if they're whiskey drinkers, then you're like, oh, I want to be like my hero. And, and once you once you kind of get into it, then you really start getting interested. Like David said, once you get into that's the right. front door, then you want to see the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's why the music world works out that way. Yeah. I, I think it relates to um, this. That same question came up. I was talking to... Um, Joshua and Jason at, at Single Cast Nation about this. And we were talking about how, you know, how do you get into something? You know, the question was posed to me, you know, what made you a Wild Turkey Super fan? Why, why not, you know, Buffalo Trace or Jim Beam or whatever? And I said, well, you know, it just, it just spoke to me. There was, I, I can't really explain, explain it. And it's just like music. You might, you might try a new band, and for some reason, you don't know why. You can't explain it. That band just means something to you like you just love their music you want to know everything about them you know who they are what guitars do they play you know what brand of strings does he use on the guitar and it's that same thing um something just speaks to you and you're like i want to know everything about this it's the same kind of thing i totally agree with that Uh, so we got a bunch of uh, people coming in, uh, super chats. You know I'm throwing on this one, Jason. Cheers to you. Great to see you talking turkey tonight. Uh, Tammy, mama loves the turkey. Come on, baby. Uh, thanks for the great shows tonight, Jason. Absolutely. Uh, Meat Sauce Podcast wants to know, cheers, Jason. Thanks so much for both streams today. Does Bo have any insight on rare breed rye availability? You just, you just had a bunch of that was available in the gift shop, correct? Uh, yeah, but we were on back order for a while. I mean, this stuff is flying off the shelves, man. Um, which is a great problem to have, I guess. But um, I think that all goes back to the, the amount of rye that was produced here at the distillery and how seldom we do rye. Um, but uh, it had been hard to predict that this was going to be big as it is. Well, it's it's an amazing whiskey, and it deserves uh, the praise that it gets. Uh, it's not that expensive, relatively speaking, compared to other uh, whiskeys mm -hmm. um, that are yeah. barrel-proof rise like that. Yeah. Um, and the flavor that you get from it is exactly what you should yeah. want from rare breed rye. It's it's like 101 rye kicked up, just like rare breed bourbon is 101 bourbon kicked up. Same kind of thing. So, you know, if you're going into rare breed rye, expecting that full flavored, you know, barrel proof one on one rock experience, you're going to be very happy. Uh, Cheech Artelino says, thank you so much for the birthday love and generosity. These well, are the best you're talking celery that had never done a barrel proof rye. Right. So when you look at the fact that there was never a barrel proof rye to come from here and then that's what comes out of the gate, man, that's, that's pretty impressive. I hope that one day, and, and I'm sure it'll happen one day down the road, I would love to taste, well, I, I've, I've had the privilege of, and as I'm sure you have too, Bo, tasting uh, rye whiskey straight from the barrel there uh, at Rick House A. Um, you know, I was able to taste two of the barrels that, that Bruce had kind of had us set aside for a while, and I was able mm -hmm. to taste that for those who got tapped out. Um, 
But uh, to have that in a bottle would be wonderful to have a well-aged barrel proof rye, you know, talking like nine plus years. Uh, that would be spectacular. I'm sure that'll come eventually. Cornerstone was pretty close. Um, you know, I, I don't think it was technically barrel proof, but it was up there. It was close. Um, it would be nice to have that, that uh, experience on a, you know, maybe like to bring back uh, some type of single barrel program where you could do barrel proof rye. That would be amazing. Uh, I doubt we'll see that anytime soon, though. Yeah. You know, definitely some good rye though coming right now. It's 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 uh it's fun to watch to be on this side and watch it all take place. That's a lot of fun, man. Yeah. I, I, have you been in there when they're distilling the rye or actually when they're when they've got the uh the fermenters going is there a different I would imagine there's a different smell cuz that when I when I did the tour, of course, it was just a bourbon run. I've never been in there on a rye run. I mean, what's the difference here? Are you getting a lot of, you know, sensory notes there um, that are a great difference from the bourbon? Well, you, you've got 23, 30,000 gallon fermenters up there. So you, those, as far as those kind of sensory perceptions, they could all get intermingled and get lost in each other. Uh, but, when the mash is actually working, when the yeast is active, mm -hmm. it looks different to look at it. You can you can see a noticeable difference, almost like the rye is foamier looking, where you oh. can see that that other mash just kind of moving along. Yeah, it, it has a different look to it altogether. That's interesting. Uh, mash bill. That's this is the mash bill at Stanley Wagner. Uh, everyone go check out his channel as soon as we're done here. Uh, he usually does his live streams right after we are over. Do you have any Austin Nichols or Donut bottles you could you can't stand and want to give away? I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hanging on to my last donut with yeah. like a death grip. Sugar Kitty, do the funky turkey in skinny jeans. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Coates, for one music guy to apparently three others, still want <laughs> no. proof from DJ on that claim. <laughs> Okay, well, um, I'll, I'll find a tune and, and throw it up somewhere for y'all to listen to. How about that? Gobble, gobble, DJ, and Bo knows turkey. Yes, they do. Um, let's see. I Max, tell you. Does the bourbon wrench count as a musician? Still need to see a drum off with Cam and Jason. Yeah, we're working on that, Matt. It's, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of like miking and a lot of stuff that has to go into that, but we're working on it. They said, I feel like you're back in school cramming for exams with the two shows in one day. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but it, it's like, if this was school, this is the best school ever. <laughs> Eric Spearman, Bo, would like to hear your favorite wild turkey expression. Mine has to be Russell's Reserve single barrel. I think that's a question a lot of people have. Bo, what's your, what's your, uh, I mean, you have the go-to, which a lot of people will say one-on-one. But if you're, out of all the, the expressions of wild turkey that you've had and you've gotten to taste, What's the one that stood out as the most, you know, the most uh, incredible to you personally? Are, are, are we talking about like, like something that's uh, done now, like available every day or something more that we don't see anymore? Uh, both. Do yeah, both. Yeah, both. Give us, give us your favorite turkey and give your, your favorite turkey expression that's, that we can get now. And give us one that that uh, that wowed you. That's probably not around today. Um, I, it, uh, what's not around anymore is, is easy for me. I was I was lucky enough to get to try uh, some of the cheesy gold foil. And man, I just love that stuff. Holy cow! Um, but then now. Um, Probably the rare breed. Rare breed. Good call. Brittany Mason says, just recently got into bourbon. I gravitated to wild turkey right away. First time watching a mass and drum stream. Favorite wild turkey bottle. For me, Brittany Mason, wow. Um, and thanks, for Brittany, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Uh, gravitating towards turkey in the beginning is not something that happens often, but I'm glad you did because you can try a wealth of expressions, and it's pretty easy to find. Um, for me, uh, so I had a, oh, like I'll probably do it the same way Bo did. My favorite one I ever had was 
I would have to actually line up with Bo on this. I had one of those gold foil 12 years that were absolutely, it was incredible. Um, that's probably the most like wow moment I've ever had drinking a turkey. And if, uh, if I knew how good those were, like maybe four or five years ago before they exploded on secondary, I probably would have bought a couple. Um, but as of today, um, I probably, you know, it kind of goes back and forth between the Russell's Reserve single barrels, but I'm going to probably stick to Rare Breed as well. Rare Breed, I think last year, they were so damn good, and I just kept going back to them. Uh, um, I have I have a Rare Breed here on the side that I literally bought, I don't know, last week, and then I have a, I have, usually when I go, I always buy two because I know I'm going to go through it real quick. They go quick. Yeah, no and, I a, and I get a backup. So they drink real quick for whatever they do. reason. So yeah, I they love, do. Yeah, I love Rare Breed. So yeah, Brittany, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, they keep outdoing themselves. Wild Turkey 101, then Rare Breed, but Kentucky Spirit, then Masters Keep. And I feel like I feel like Kentucky Spirit is becoming getting a little bit more notoriety as of late. I think the more picks that come out with Kentucky Spirit, especially from different warehouses, I think we're going to start seeing more people asking for those, not just the Russell's Reserves. I think there's there's a little psychological element there um, when they switch the design from the Fantail to the Rare Breed style bottle. Yeah, you know, people weren't happy with that. I wasn't happy with that. I don't think. Hardly yeah. anyone was happy with that. I, I missed the, I missed this bottle. There it right. is, the old, the old fantail. But it's gone. It's gone. Okay, yep. so folks, it's gone. But just because it's in that bottle doesn't mean it's going to taste any better than the ones that they bottle now. In fact, I think some of the ones that they're bottling right now are just hands down better than some of those last ones in the in the fantail bottle. And that's just my personal opinion, but. Like the S, uh, you know, Mike had, had made a comment earlier about the, the uh, Rickhouse S. Uh, you know, Sunday Evening and Scotch had mentioned the Rickhouse S Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirits. I have one that's just that one that I got from you, Jason, from Ohio. It's killer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's delicious. It's dark, too. I mean, it's for, for Kentucky Spirit. Yeah. And uh, just a lot of nice oak elements. I've had some E's that were great uh, last year. Mm -hmm. I had an A that was great last year. Um and I think people are tasting it again and realizing that, you know, maybe me poo-pooing all over the, the bottle change, you know, I need to get over that because <laughs> I'm, I'm letting good whiskey go because I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to buy it because of the well, bottle change, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, it's basically the rare breed bottle. Right. Um, if you compare the two, it's the same damn bottle. You think the psychological thing has to do with people thinking this is like as good as rare breed because it's no, I think bottle. I think it's they're just <laughs> mad that the old bottle doesn't exist or something, and yeah. uh, you got to get over that, folks, or you're going to miss out on some good some good barrels. Yeah, because sure. let's face it, some bourbons taste better at a lower proof than others, and and I'm not joking. You know, uh, you know, just because something is 110 proof over 101 proof doesn't mean that the 110 proof is always going to be better. There are some bourbons that that water actually changes. Well, the water always changes the profile, but yep. sometimes it changes it for the better. There, there are bourbons that, that speak. And I know that there are people that have uh, noticed this with the old, the old Forrester picks at that's because some whiskeys just taste better, you know, at a, at a lower well, proof. I mean, talking to Jackie today, she's, she's a firm believer that are at lower proof. Mm -hmm. I've seen right. so far with the barrel proof. I think when she's working on an expression, you know, to the, to the, you know, kind of keeps their ear to the ground on. She was right. When we, when we had a whole different whiskey. Yeah, I'd do that with that as well. I'm going to assume that Old Forester is using a 125 barrel entry proof. I could be wrong. It's like, for example, barrel pick and, and the samples range anywhere from 114 to distillery, like, you know, a beam more loudly. Being here. I kind of mention real quick that I know there's, yeah, I don't know if YouTube is having an issue. Uh, you guys can keep refreshing so long to go live. Okay. Uh, yeah. If it's going to happen, it's going to be tonight, right? <laughs> yeah. <Fucking> YouTube, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them know, yeah? Shh. Uh-oh. Did Charlie, we lose Jason? I think we did. It's a show now, David. Yeah. Trying to rum it here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all just jump on. <laughs> 
once I came over here and sat down. Says Wild Turkey broke the internet. The proof was just too high. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> oh man. Well, well, I've had I've I've enjoyed it. I've had a good conversation. Technology is awesome. <laughs> when it works. Oh wait, we're back now. I think it's back. Let's see. <laughs> that, it, it, it's amazing. You know, uh, I guess I shouldn't complain too much because, you know, YouTube 99% of the time seems to work for me. But then again, I'm not a content creator like you, Jason. So I, I'm sure it's frustrating. Uh, it can be, especially when stuff like this happens on the night of your live streams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can... When the, the pandemic first tube and the and they didn't they because I remember the videos looked a lot lower. They kind of upped it or something. It uh, looks like some new, we're, we're, we're staying on, guys. Okay. <laughs> we're staying on. We're getting, that, getting that tape out, that duct tape. Yeah, I've got 70 people still hanging on the chat. Damn shit. <laughs> oh, my God. i tell you what we need to do. So, Jason, when all this virus stuff's over with, we're going to yep. go down and visit with Bo, and we'll do this the right way. We'll have it all set up with some nice cameras. And we can do it legit. That's right. Um, I know Eddie would go kicking and screaming. We're going to drag him. <laughs> I'll wave a cheesy golf ball yeah, bottle. Yeah, of course, like, so on, I, didn't, I was going to warn you guys now that I've only been when I met him that first time. I felt like I was talking to like, I don't know. <laughs> I was just like looking at him like, oh, my God, it's fucking Eddie Russell. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you know, so if. It'll probably be a real awkward stream. Basically, what's going to happen is he's going to come on the screen, and I'm just going to be like staring at him, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can talk. <laughs> I, I think it'd be I think it'd be a good time. It'd be it'd be fun to do. I think it'd be fun to do like Eddie a, a, is awesome man. I tell you, definitely. Go ahead, Bo. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You're you're fine. It, it's, He's been really good to me. If, if um, I get stumped and don't understand something or don't know the answer to something, um, he'll he'll help me out in any way he can. So it's he's been a huge reference point for me. Yeah, it's amazing. You know the the years he's been there. You know since you know oh, eighty one. You know. Uh, yeah to have all that experience there, hands-on, starting from the ground up, uh, witnessing some of the, the major events there at Wild Turkey, the fire, building a new distillery, changing ownership. I mean, there's a lot that, that he's witnessed over the years and uh, certainly a wealth of knowledge for sure. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of folks talk about Jimmy and, and, and Jimmy deserves to be talked about. Don't hear as much about Eddie, but but we should. Yeah, it's true. Uh, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Great streams today. Yep, we're still we're still. You we're know, still the funny going. thing is, though, I think Eddie's okay with that. Yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah, but he he's going to get talked about whether he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt's back. What is each of your favorite warehouses for Russell's Reserve, and why? Oh God. Um, I, I still think the best expressions I've had have come from uh, F and D, personally. I, I've had some pretty damn amazing A's as well, but F and D have had standout um, uh, relief. What about, what about you? Uh, I, I'm curious what your kind of favorite is, David. Okay. Well, that, that's – okay. So that, that's a, a very difficult question to answer because when it comes to Russell's Reserve – and Kentucky Spirit goes all the way back to '94, and yeah. you, you don't really know what campus you're getting things from. But uh, Russell's Reserve goes back to 2013, 2014, 15 ish for the private selections when you actually got a Rick House on a tag. So, relatively speaking, Russell's Reserve single barrel private selections haven't been around, you know, long enough to where you can't go back and taste them all. So you you can put them all together if you spend enough time and money going into it. Um, it really depends on the year. 
and the and the Rick House on the floor, like you know, what's in season, this type of thing. It's hard to say. Well, what's my favorite Rick House? Because uh, you know, the best Russell's pick I ever had came from M, um, and that uh, was kind of like a, a rarity because it was a forty-two bottle barrel. It was a very very low yield, um, and so I think that one had a little bit of something special there. Uh, but I had a lot of good bees from 2017, uh, Tyrone B, which is right there beside a, like, like almost within arm's reach, uh, built very close in a way that you can't do nowadays. Um, and yeah. G from 2016, uh, some amazing picks from, from G, uh, from that time period. CNFs, uh, especially last year when you had those 10 year plus CNFs that were just so rich. Oh, and that yeah. may be what you're giving away. But uh, the D's from 2018 that you were talking about are, are killer. Um, and then last year, uh, S really impressed me for being different. Um, S just had the spice vibe that, like, you know, I haven't really tasted in a while. Maybe some H uh, picks from 2017 or something. Mm -hmm. But I really was impressed with S last year. But but there were lots of great ones from from A B E G, um, and again C and F. But uh, this year, I almost don't want to say because like uh, there's some there's some surprises, folks. I'm gonna go ahead go ahead and tell you now. 2021 is gonna be a great year for Russell's Reserve single barrel. I'll tell you that. It it's it's not what you're going to expect. Last year kind of they all kind of had like this nutty vibe. I mean, E was a little bit different and S was a little bit different, but the rest of them outside of Camp Nelson had like this nutty kind of vibe, which is fine. Uh but uh this year I was expecting that going into these Tyrone F and I tasted uh let's see, Tyrone F, CNA and McBrayer. And I'm gonna tell you, folks. There's some really cool stuff coming. Just sit tight and wait. But there's some great single barrels headed your way. Well, are we getting this Russell's Reserve 13 year single barrel this year? Is that is that still yeah? Is that yeah. still a thing? Sometime uh, I heard late summer. I don't know how accurate that is, but you know that the last time I talked to someone at Capari about it, that was what I heard was, you know, they're shooting for a summer release with that Russell's 13. Yeah. So uh, just so you know. <clears throat> um, David was right. This is a 10 year old store pick. That's one that you won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, this is distilled, uh, November Oh yeah. nine and dumped, uh, seven to 19. So, and, and, and Bo will confirm this, you know, that's probably one of the last single barrels from the old still. Probably I saw that. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So that's that's a good one to have right there. And you don't see Russell's picks over 10 years that often. Uh, CNF, those special CNF ones from last year, uh, you know, there were some CNDs and some CNAs, I think, that crossed the that 10 year mark. Uh, uh, what's, a, what's a fair price for 2003? I only see it for crazy secondary. Never found a pour in a bar. Yeah, don't. I would not buy it at the secondary prices. Um, it's listen, it's a damn good turkey expression. Um, but the lower proof, I think sometimes, I don't want to say turns people off, but it's not, ex not expecting, it, it's kind of like an unexpected type of, uh, you know, you can't, you can't go into it thinking it's going to be like rare breed or anything like that with all this. No. It is full, I it is full flavored. It really is. But if you did it in a blind and me and me and David did it on, you know, on a live stream, we put it in a blind against some other stuff that was a little bit higher proof in it. You know, the nose and the palate definitely stood up, but the finish fell flat because of the lower proof. It's it's 89.5 proof. So, yeah, it 2003 sips well on its own. Yeah. If you put it up in a blind against things that are a lot higher proof, it, it's going to have a very difficult time competing with those. That said, it's barrel proof. OK, so you, you've got to look at it as to me. I love 2003. Um, I think it's incredible. Mm -hmm. it's it's one of my you know, favorite modern wild turkey expressions i i just don't like the whole secondary thing honestly um secondary for vintage spirits i'm fine with um that makes sense but secondary for stuff that like just came out 
is just ridiculous. And for that reason alone, I would say just just try to find somebody that can give you a sample of it. Because like Jason said, it may not be your thing. Uh, I love 2003. I think it has a very special profile. Yep. The sip by itself. It came in second in our blind. It did. Um, it came in second. It, it came behind the bottle and bond. So my thing would, instead of paying secondary for 2003, if you want something with similar flavor, get the bottled and bond. It's 17 years. And, uh, you know, you're know you going to pay a lot less for that than the 2003. Yeah. Um, uh, Bo, I don't know if you know this. You know Chris Camel? He says from Camel's Barbecue. Drop in and say hello. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, Jason, can Rare Bird be a quarterly guest at a minimum, please? <laughs> Wild turkey lovers. <laughs> I'll come on anytime, man. I, I yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, David's always been good about coming. In. And listen, if you have all this great stuff coming out for 2021 that David can't talk about quite yet, then I have a feeling he's going to be on a lot in this year. So, cause... Well, you know, it's like I know how people are getting. It's like I never imagined a day yeah. when things like rare breed would be allocated. Like there are certain areas where people can't even find rare breed anymore. Yeah. So I get nervous about talking about things that in my head are like just everyday releases like Russell's Reserve Single Barrel because I feel like, you know, if I go in here and say, well, you know, you got to look out for this Rick House yeah. or that Rick, Rick House in, in 2021, people are going to just start, you know, looking for it. And not that I feel like I'm that influential, but the fact that it's on YouTube and, and you know, a lot of people are going to be watching this video I just don't want to feed the whole, you know, taterism thing. I think that, look, you know, wild turkey doesn't bottle crappy single barrels. So, you know, if if you can, if you can't find a private selection, just buy a shelf bottle. I think you're going to be pretty happy. Uh, matter of fact, um, if you did a blind and threw some private selections in with a retail Russell's Reserve single barrel bottle, you'd probably not be able to pick out which was which, but that's just my thinking. Yeah. Um, actually, it's a cool story that oh, Bo told me. Yeah. They're all good. Yeah. Bo, Bo told me a cool story about a group that came into the uh, distillery recently, and they had watched one of my videos on Turkey, and they were looking for some bottles. Right, Bo? Is that, is that what you, you, were, you were telling me? Yes. Yeah, they sure did. It was a group of four people, and uh, they came in, and they were they hadn't had turkey. The only reason they were here was because they had watched Jason all the time, and they said that he seemed to really like wild turkey, so that's why they were here. It was <laughs> awesome. four folks, and uh, I, I told them, well, I'm going to text him right now and told him, tell him you told me that. <laughs> I thought that was freaking awesome. I'm like – shit i'm like hey if i could get more people to try turkey why not um so we're also going to be giving away a bottle so bourbon battalion in the chat. yeah bourbon battalion in the chat he's also going to be putting a giveaway in tonight he's going to be giving away a bottle of rare breed rye that we've been talking about so cool. so you have three giveaways tonight guys so uh so we'll start let's see it's 10 30 right now um yeah, how can you not like wild turkey? I mean, it's just sometimes it's just not people's thing, you know? It's, I think that things are changing, honestly. I think things are changing, yeah. too. So I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that people, for whatever reason, and it's probably a little bit of all of our faults, are starting to catch on. <laughs> hey, well, here, here's – I got to thinking about this the other day, and I'm like, you know, why? Yeah, I've had actually had – Go ahead, bud. Oh, I've, I've had people actually uh, ask me not to say something about a sweet product on if I brag on it on Instagram or Twitter. They'll be like, hey, keep that a secret, man. Don't let that out there. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, people have kind of said, well, is it this person or that person? Or is it this blog or that blog or this magazine or that magazine or this YouTuber or that YouTuber cause an increase? Here's what I really think it is. I think that is some of it. I think that a lot of the YouTubers and the bloggers and the and the 
folks writing these magazine articles have helped. Okay. The fact that Wild Turkey is placing in things like Whiskey Advocates top, you know, 10 of the year and this type of stuff. I think all that stuff helps. But what really makes the difference is if it didn't taste good, all that would go away. All that would go away quickly. Yeah. It, the fact that it is really good, the fact that it tastes just as good as this shit that people are chasing. And, and I hate to throw out names, but, you know, y'all know the, the tater, you know, bourbons that everybody goes after. Um, the fact that it tastes better than those, you know, the truth eventually shows. And, and the proof is in the pudding, as they say. And as people start tasting things, like, y'all wouldn't believe it, but I, I mean, I have I have patrons that just recently tasted Wild Turkey 101. Like, they were buying the, the expensive stuff, mm -hmm. but they weren't buying 101. And then they finally go and just buy 101. And, and why anyone skips 101, I don't know, because you can buy it in minis. Come on, you know, give it a shot. Right. And um, But they're just now tasting 101, and they're like, holy cow this is unbelievable for the money. And I'm like, bingo, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. and, and, and the fact that it tastes good is why it's doing the way it's doing. If it didn't taste good, none of this would be happening. Yeah. So Jeff, uh, Bo's Instagram is firebird bow and it's, uh, all one word, lowercase firebird bow. So go find him on Instagram. He, he's been posting a lot of cool stuff from the distillery uh, lately, which has been great. Um, Heather Keller, if you're a newbie bourbon drinker, what wild turkey would you recommend? Go go to that Long Branch. Long Branch or uh, Russell's 10 is a good yeah. one. 90 Long proof, Branch. 30 bucks, 10 yeah, year Russell. age statement. Boom. Russell's 10 is a great option. Russell's as well. 10, yes. I, I send a lot of folks to Russell's 10. Yep. I mean, it, I mean, look, Eagle Rare is 10 year, 90 proof, but it's hard to find in a lot of places. Yeah. Russell's ten right now is not. It's a good. It's a good bourbon to pick up. Yeah, you know, and this, just getting started. Grab that one. I mean, that's like my favorite daily drinker now. I hate to say it, but like it used to be one hundred and one and and rare breed. But like as I get older, I mean, I just can't drink all this higher proof stuff at night and write anything. So, uh, Russell's yeah. ten is is a go to for me. Yeah, whiskey whiskey mountains. Uh, I honestly think some people have kept to the college idea of shots of wild turkey. It's a negative correlation. I don't think realize it's great, you know, they don't realize it's great stuff. I think, yeah, there's definitely some of that that uh, that comes into play uh, for sure. Um, I will throw in a sample pack of the entire Masters Keep series, Jay, for example. Boom. Whoa. Wow. That's, that's cool. Wow. That's big. Wow. That's awesome. Pop them, don't watch them. That's fucking amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, you know what you had mentioned about the shots of wild turkey? I was watching Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof last night, yeah. and uh, they do <laughs> shots of wild turkey in that movie. Yep. Absolutely, RVA. I totally agree. Turkey's great. The whole lineup. Um, no, no complaints about any of it. Uh, yeah, even one-on-one to get started sometimes for some people, but Long Branch and Russell's 10 – at the lower proof points really kind of makes sense because you can get, you know, obviously the long branch to me is a little bit of an outlier because it does have that mesquite type little bit of a, of a push to it. So it's not cheap too. It's not cheap and you don't want to, you know, uh, you don't want to quantify the entire flavor profile of Turkey just within long branch because it is a little bit of an outlier. Russell's 10 is a little bit more classic mm -hmm. and for 10 year bourbon for like 30 something bucks. I mean, it's kind of a steal. It really is. Yeah. Eric Thompson, 25 years ago, there was a cigar resurgence. So yeah. many new good cigars came out. I believe as bourbon gains in popularity, you will find more quality bourbons by old distilleries and new. True. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah, the giveaway just got nuts, guys. So this, <laughs> this is what we're doing. Uh, we'll go to, you know, we'll go to 11. Is that cool with you, Bo? Can you hang out till about 11? Um. I don't know. I'm going to have to cut out soon. I got to be back over here by 8:30 in the morning. Oh. 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 Okay. Well, if, I mean, if you need to get out of here, uh, then you you can do that. Me and me and uh, me and David can just yeah, kind so, of. Well, oh. Yep. Be before I go, um, David and I were talking about this before we went uh, live earlier. We need to give a big uh, happy birthday shout out to Bruce Russell today. Damn right. That's right. It is Bruce Russell's birthday today, guys. So uh, 
we're we're hoping yeah. to maybe maybe at some point get him on the show. We'll see what happens, guys. But yes, it is Bruce Russell's birthday. Cheers to Bruce. Cheers. Yeah. There you go. But before uh, I take off, guys, I, I just want to uh, first of all um, say thank you so much, Jason, for asking me to even be on here and be part of this. I love it. Hope we can do it again. Um, next time I'll go stand on one leg on top of a rock up here, maybe get the phones to work. Um, I, <laughs> I do. I, I really appreciate you having me. Uh, can't say thank you enough, man. And, uh, but I'm going to have to cut so I can get back over here and talk Turkey again tomorrow morning. Absolutely, Bo. Good thanks to see you, Bo. Bo. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks for everything, man. Uh, keep talking the turkey gospel. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for supporting just the channel in general since the beginning, man. I really appreciate it. Cheers, Bo. Thank you. Hey, man, you got a, you, you've got a, a big voice and it matters. And that's, that's a good thing because uh, you talk about us a lot. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Cheers, Bo. Have a good one. No problem, guys. Later, Bo. Later, Bo. And there goes Bo. All right. So you, all got, right. you got a lot of giveaways here, man. Yeah, so it was a little choppy in the beginning, but he kind of held he kind of held form towards the end. Dude, I mean, this kind of stuff happens. And yeah, yeah. to have this many folks hanging on watching, this is this is great. Yeah. It just shows, you know, how dedicated of a fan base you have. Yeah, dude, the, the chat is the reason, you know, they're the reason pretty much for everything. So I love you guys. What's all your favorite Masters Keep? Oh, my God. So I know I could – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer for David and see if I could get this right. Okay. Because I knew for a long time he was in love with the, uh, with the Revival, which was, a, right. which was a surprise because it was a Sherry-finished uh, Masters right. Keep. And that was his – that was your favorite – I don't know what your favorite was up until that point, but I know that was your favorite for a while. But now I think I think the seventeen Bob and Bond took it over a little bit. Am I am I right? It, it's tough. Okay, so <laughs> if I had to say favorite so masters, I'm, I'm so wrong. <laughs> uh, it, well, favorite masters keep whiskey would be revival for sure. Oh, it's still um, revival. Okay, it is well, but but favorite masters keep bourbon because yeah. I don't consider finished bourbon to be bourbon um, would be uh, the the Bob and Bond. For sure. So, you know, was, it, it, it kind of goes, which ain't because, you know, some nights I'm in the mood for something finished and some nights I'm not. So to me, they're kind of, yes, they have the same, they carry the same, you know, expression title as Masters Keep, but uh, they're different whiskeys altogether. So I, I'm just going to have to say that if I'm in the mood for you know, something finished, I'll go with Revival. If I want something more of a straight bourbon, the Bald and Bond. Yeah. Yeah, everyone go check out Whiskey Nose as well. Another uh, newer channel. Uh, Joseph Berry, five bucks. Uh, AC Jones, MD, thank you so much. Ernie Brubaker, thanks, Jason. What a day! I know it's been a crazy day, but I'm. Uh, I was super excited today. It was kind of like I knew it was going to be kind of a marathon sort of a day with all the content, and uh, and I was editing a video in between the two live streams, uh, which should be dropping tomorrow. So I, I made this video, David, uh, called um, the perfect uh, the perfect beginner's bourbon collection for four hundred bucks. Okay. So it's basically just I I was able to squeeze ten bottles out of it with one with one bonus bottle that uh, I threw in there in case you have some extra to spend if you can uh, if you all seven fifties, all seven fifties. Okay. Yep. That's a cool. Now here here's what you should have done. Well. Not that that what you, I haven't even seen what you've done, so you, you may have blown it out of the park. But that would have been a cool topic to spread around the you know the whiskey tubers. Like everybody has to do this. You have to have yeah. a four hundred dollar starter thing, and it has to you have to get ten bottles out of it. It would have been interesting to see you know what like ADHD whiskey would have picked and the whiskey crusaders and this type of. It, it would have been a nice little topic to to pass on to each other to see what yeah, everybody I mean, would have yeah, done. I mean, you know what? Maybe if I talk to some other channels, maybe they'll do it too. But four hundred dollars is was a challenging like amount. Yeah, I wanted to kind of keep it there, 
and see, man, what, how many bottles can I squeeze out of 400 bucks? And I was able to get 10. That's great. So, uh, and I, and not only did I pick the bottles that I thought were just good, I didn't just pick bottles because, you know, I like them. Obviously I like them, but I also picked bottles. Like I tried to keep it from different distilleries and gave right. like, like a short history of the bottle. So if any beginner, you know, bourbon drinker wanted to buy these bottles, they would also have, you know, a little bit of a story behind it so they can, you sure. know, when they're, when they're sharing it with friends and family, they could talk to the bottle a little bit, have a conversation about it. That's really what it's about. That's so, great. Did you do rye as well or is it just bourbon? I just did bourbon, but okay. I have a, uh, I have a, I have a rye. My top five available rye video is coming out soon too. So okay, I have cool. that one out too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, Wild Turkey 17 is Bellmead Reserve 108 with Weller Special Reserve and Woodenville Port. Oh, he's he's blending. Oh, yeah, that's right. So Bourbon Battalion Bobby loves to blend. He thinks he got it pretty close. He he blended Bellmead Reserve, Weller Special Reserve, and Woodenville Port. I have a hard time believing that a port finished whiskey would equal yeah, master's whiskey. key bottom line. A taste and believe is believing, but. That's right. Um, as you know, hey, DJ's idea is doable. That's a great idea for video, Jason. It would be something cool to see other channels do. Yeah, absolutely, man. Robert Warren, uh, would it be a challenge to only spend 400 Yeah, hey, the Babes of Bourbon, <laughs> any channels that are watching, if you guys want to do that, you know, run with it. Uh, try to try to get, try to uh, build the perfect beginner's bourbon collection for 400 But watch Jason's first. Yeah, well, well mine's coming out tomorrow. So unless okay. we film it tonight, I don't know if it's coming any more coming out. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm confused. You can get 25 750 millimeters of fireball. <laughs> <laughs> and your and your liquor store would probably love you. Yeah, because you know what, your liquor store will probably get a bottle of Blanton's after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, still looking for rare breed rye. It is going to become more readily available in 2021. Sure. I mean, they're making more rye than they made in the past and all these things yeah. take time to age the good yeah. news with rare breed rye is the oldest element is eight years um the wow. youngest element is four years yep. so it will scale over time uh, the bad thing is you're competing with demand so if demand scales just as much or more you're looking at the same dilemma you're in right now but that's not a wild turkey problem that's a american whiskey problem uh whoever gets the um whoever gets this sample this thing is right at a sweet spot in the bottle. It is just getting more and more like butterscotchy, like my my favorite flavor that you get from a Russell Reserve. This like super rich butterscotch note is starting to come through. It's freaking delicious. I love it. Yeah, it's a very special bottle, and it's one to be kind of you know sipped on its own. Like I said, don't go throwing it up in a comparison with Stag. It's just it, there's just no way it's going to compete with 120 plus proof bourbon. Yeah, Matt, you also need to, yes, Matt, uh, ADHD Whiskey just put another challenge, the only five whiskeys, but he kind of flipped it on its head and did his own categories. So he did like a long pour. He did the the bourbon to get the night, the whiskey to get the night started. So he, he so he kind of challenged everyone else to kind of do that. So, yeah, we're going to do that one too. Um, Let's see. I thought I you saw know, I, I love ADHD whiskey. I, I and I really enjoy watching his videos. Man. Oh, me too, man. Hilarious. Yeah, I love that dude. Uh, hey, Ron Miles is in the house. What's up, Ron? He's from the Detroit Whiskey Society. We hung out last week. We did a uh, we did a uh, live tasting with uh, some of the Detroit um, Whiskey Society single barrels that they've selected with Fred Minnick on a Zoom call, which was a lot of fun. Um, he said he got to try 101 eight year from 1984 with Klein yesterday. Absolutely amazing. That turkey funk is just the best. Thanks for a great day of streams. Cheers to you, David. Yeah, he got to try the 2003 as well. When cool. he was here. He absolutely loved it. Cheers. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, butterscotch, Ernie. Absolutely. <laughs> Butter, butterscotch. Uh, you are the best YouTuber with the best channel. Thank you so much for your contribution to bourbon. That's that's a bold statement, but thank you. I, don't think I have to agree, Jason. You are the best. <laughs> Uh, the fireball comment wins the interwebs for today. Yeah, that pretty much won the chat. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you think of Masters Keep Rye? Um, I thought for what it was, it was a great rye. I just don't think it got the notoriety that it deserved because as we've talked about tonight, 
it still feels like Wild Turkey is just kind of easing into rye right now. That's right. They're, kind of, they're hitting their stride with rye. Um, the Cornerstone, I felt like, came out a little bit sooner than uh, than their stride was hitting. But it doesn't take away from the fact that it was a great rye whiskey, a great rye release. So, yeah, it, it. I mean, the name says it all, Cornerstone. They're, they're, they're going ahead and tell, telling you right yeah. off the bat that this is kind of the start of something. It was just priced a little high for what it was, um, especially in comparison to uh, expressions like Russell's Reserve Single Barrel Rye. Yes. Which, you know, some of those are, are bangers. Yeah. So, uh, so guys, we're going to go, it's almost, uh, it's about 14 minutes to 11. I'll give you five more minutes to get any more super chats in. So tonight's giveaway, we have a 10 year old Russell's reserve single barrel pick. Um, we also have, uh, a mass and drum curved bourbon glass, uh, coupled with a sample of the wild Turkey 13 father and son. And the Wild Turkey, uh, I'm sorry, the Russell's Reserve, 16 year, 2003. Uh, we also got a giveaway of Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye from Bourbon Battalion, and from Pop 'em Don't Watch 'em, a sample pack of every single Masters Keep release. So, killer, killer, killer giveaways tonight. So if you guys haven't gotten in on these yet, get your super chats in. I'll let it go for five more minutes, and then we'll start the giveaway. I hope there's a bourbon wrench out there keeping track of the names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, yeah, butterscotch peeking around the corner. Have a bunch of 2013 Wild Turkey 101. What a difference to 2019 turkey. Yeah, I mean, there, there's actually a comparison on my blog, I believe, of a 2013 to a 2019, like in one post, like a side by side comparison. I'll have to look it up to confirm, but I'm pretty sure if someone wants to look at that. Yeah, for sure. So what? Uh, so what? What expression from Wild Turkey is you know kind of on your? Well, it's probably it might be one that you know about that you can't talk about yet. <laughs> no, no. I mean, the well, 13. Let me, let me get your thought. What do you? What is your thought on the Masters Keep announcement for the toasted bourbon? Okay, well, I, I had a whole blog post about it if someone wants to get real detailed with it. Uh, yep. Could, called uh, One Can Only Assume, I believe was the title of it. Um, we don't know a lot about it. Um, all we know is it has a toasted oak element to it. What that means, we don't know yet. Because that could mean that, you know, it's finished in toasted oak barrels 100%. That could be some of it and then blended back with 100%, you know, regular KSBW. We just don't know. Um, all I can say about that is that Eddie has made it very clear. He had a zoom webinar. Uh, if folks called it, it was on Instagram that, uh, was advertised on Instagram, but he was, uh, doing a thing about independent stave and he talked about the new, uh, toasted barrel real briefly. And he basically said that, you know, he's not going to put his name on something that he doesn't stand behind. Mm -hmm. So if there's naysayers out there saying, well, it's a toasted barrel, this is gimmicky, everybody's doing toasted barrels, yada, yada. Well, understand, first of all, that, you know, these masters keep things don't happen overnight. I mean, this was something that's been in the works for a while now. Um, so to call it gimmicky, I mean, yeah, Mictor's toasted has been out for a long time. But, uh, you know, this isn't like just him, like seeing that Elijah Craig comes out and like, oh, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Um, but uh I think the folks need to have an open mind because no one's tasted this. We don't know any of the specs. We don't know the age. All we know is that he's kind of stated that this is a marriage of profiles. So he's, he's taking whiskey that is of Jimmy's profile uh, preference and uh, blending it with his profile preference. And some of that, all of that, half of that, I don't know what is getting finished in a special toasted oak barrel. Uh, and I think that's going to be a, a light char toast in other okay. words, because it's not going to be the baked toasted because it wouldn't carry that, that straight, uh, bourbon, the Kentucky straight bourbon, uh, designation if it weren't charred, new charred oak. So I think it's gonna be like a light char toast. Uh, one of my favorite bourbons of the year was the Russell single barrel pick I snagged. Of course it was gone when I realized I wanted 10 more. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> yeah, that definitely happens. Um, Jason Coates, it's not gimmicky, but it is cringily trendy. Yes. And I think that was everyone's first reaction to it. 
when they saw, you know, that 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 was going to be the next release was a toasted type of turkey. But again, these were all knee jerk reactions. You never know. I mean, if like I said, it, like I always say, in Eddie we trust. So, yeah, well, so so here's something else. I was thinking about this today. I actually like that this is coming in as an underdog LE, and here's yeah. why. If it underperforms, you're going to have everybody say, well, I told you so. I knew it was going to be that way, right. blah, blah, blah. And then it just fades away, okay? Because there were no high expectations. But if it comes in and it's a grand slam and people have missed out on this shit and they should have bought it and like everybody else that was like dedicated Wild Turkey fans went out and bought them all, yeah. I'm going to be like, nah, nah, boo-boo, you suck. You should have, you know, <laughs> you know. You Nana snooze, you lose, <laughs> you know, Nana call Boo-Boo. it whatever you want, you know, yeah. gimmicky, whatever you lost. So either way, you know, I'm buying it, but it would be, it would be beautiful in my eyes to just see a bunch of people pass on it. Cause like, Oh, this is a gimmick. It's toasted oak. And that turns out to be freaking awesome. And then like all the Turkey fans buy it up and everybody, all the tater heads are like left with nothing. That would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Jason here. Sure, maybe they'll pull it off. Nobody else has managed to do it better than Woodford with it, but you never know until it hits shelves. Yeah. I would agree. I mean, Elijah Craig Toasted seemed to be a pretty divisive uh, release. Last I like it. I mean, there was people that liked it. I didn't like it until it got like halfway down the bottle. There was like, there was a little sweet spot there that I really liked it. So I didn't like the top and I didn't like the bottom, but right in the middle of the bottle, I I enjoyed it. I All the marshmallow flavors really came out. But yeah, I mean, I got to agree. I'm not a fan of the Michter's Toasted. There's something bitter about it that I that's never really agreed with me. Uh, the Toasted Rye I love, but the Toasted Bourbon, I don't think it's worth the $400, $500 that people are paying for it on secondary. And then you have, of course, Woodford Double Oaked. It's one of those... They were toasting bourbon before toasting was cool, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not necessarily true. There are some bourbons that they toast and char. So, well, I mean, toast, yeah, toasting I mean, the wood's been around for a while, but yeah, toasting, as a as a release, yes, right. right. As, as a secondary char. Right. Secondary you know, maturation. Secondary right. maturation, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so I, like I said, I hope that, it comes out and like the, only the turkey fans buy it, and then it's like that's right, amazing. And then it's like you suck. <laughs> yeah, like wow, look what we got! Holy shit. Yep. Um, so let me see here. Uh, oh yeah. So real quick before we get to the giveaways, um, this is the uh, one of the first times I've had the Forgiven. I'm a fan. Which one is that? Three hundred two or three hundred three? Uh, three hundred three. Okay, you need to try three hundred two. Because 303 to me is vastly inferior compared to 302. Batch 302 has like that dusty funk kind of to it where it's like oh, nice. there's more of a, a, a older school vibe to it. 303 to me just kind of came across as like this really like vibrant kind of lower proof, but it has kind of those useful notes. Cause I mean, it's like four to six year whiskey. Yeah. It's got, um, it's got, a, it's got a youthful herbal quality to it. It's right. more like a young rye than it does a boo rye. Exactly. So try 302 and you're going to be like, wait, this is totally different than 303. I can find one. I'll, I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> Worst case, I'll send you a sample, buddy. Yeah. Forgiven is the original Burai. That's right. Pop him to watch him. All right. <laughs> Daniel, he just said your bottle sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say like, fuck your train. <laughs> I don't like what happened with my train. <laughs> uh, here it is. Don't fuck with my train. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and then here's uh here's fred giving me the look <laughs> but you always love fred look at my train fuck your train <laughs> oh my god um let's see here i think all right i think it's 10 55 let's start doing these giveaways um <laughs> david says f you're forgiven <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good. I mean, you definitely tell there's a there's a high rise spice to it. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if it comes off like when I the first time I had High West Burai, that came off like a Burai to me. It 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 started like a bourbon and finished like a rye. Well, that's because they've got a 95 percent rye mash bill in there. Well, yeah, the the um, forgiven though, this forgiven in particular, um, yeah, it, it's drinking more like a straight you know rye. I mean, it's got a little bit of the bourbon, vanilla, caramel. 
It's got a very nice orange citrus punch, which would make you think turkey um, a little bit, but it is nice. But it's a Kentucky rye with a Kentucky bourbon, that, that barely legal. So you're getting more, to me, you're getting more uh, like young bourbon notes in yeah. that 303. But you, you are getting that rye spice too. I, I need to send you a 302. I think you're going to be pretty you know, impressed at the difference between those two batches. It's kind of surprising to me. I'm going to be impressed and then I'm going to be pissed that I have this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, William Davilar, what are the bottles being given away? What's up, William? Uh, so real quick, we have a Russell's Reserve 10-year single barrel uh, store pick, uh, a Master Jump Curved Bourbon Glass uh, pack with a sample of the Wild Turkey 13 and the Russell's 2003. Uh, then we also have a bottle of Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye and then a bottle of Wild Turkey, I'm sorry, then a sample pack from Pop em, Don't Watch Him of every single Master's Keep that was ever released. So uh, a whole vertical of all the Master's Keep sample pack. So, um, all right. Let's see. I so, got a question about that all the Masters Keep line. Does it include the Australian exactly. only 1894? Exactly. You know what? You know what? I just I just got a bottle of that. Did you? Okay. I just got a bottle of that. I, I want to hear your thoughts when you're when you're done tasting it. If yeah, you think it's Masters Keep worthy. I haven't received it yet. It's on its way, but somebody somebody was able to get one and I was like, holy shit, I want it. Um, how do you get eligible for the giveaway? Just throw in a super chat. Um, yeah, any, yeah, uh, Chris Tatt says, including the 1984 Masters Keep. William Tavlar's like, yep, <laughs> <laughs> he's in. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. And then technically, Decades has two batches. So if you really want to get nerdy, is, is it going to include 0001 and 0002 or just one of those? Uh, Poppin says it does not include the Australian release. I knew that was coming. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Uh, okay, so we have our super chats in, guys. Um, hopefully, if any of you wrenches out there, Bourbon Wrench or anybody was keeping track, maybe Bobby from Bourbon Battalion, if anybody was keeping track of the uh, super chats, let me know what the number is, how many super chats do we have, and we'll start pulling names here. Because it wasn't me. I didn't keep track of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good evening, Scott says, I'll toss in a five-pack of Russell Reserve picks from different Rick houses for you. Boom. Get but I have not been tracking Super Chats. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Tats, you never said you wanted any before. I have bought many bottles over in our trips. Oh, Chris, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's like one of those where I just didn't think they were around anymore, honestly. Uh, but, you know, apparently they are. So, yes. Um, uh was able to get a bottle from my buddy Patrick. Um, he actually just picked it up today. So, yeah, here it is. Master's Keep 1894. So he just sent me sent me a photo of it. Cool. There it is, the gray, the old school gray box. Got to love it. You know, I, I really need to go back and, and taste that one again. I, I only had a sample, several ounces. When I did my review, I was not impressed. I mean, I think a lot of folks have read my review. It was one of the more... Uh, I don't say negative, but it was definitely not a, a positive review. Yeah. Uh, and I would like to go back and taste it again just to kind of know, you know, what that profile, just get more familiar with it and see, you know, was that first impression and second impression because I tasted it a couple of times. Was I on the money or did I miss something? I would love to kind of know, you know, that I, I hit that mark right. But I can tell you my first impression and second impression were not. Very good of that one. Uh, and I've, I've heard that about that one, but it's kind of like one of those bottles that you never thought you'd see and you just kind of want to. Oh, yeah. Add it and to if it. I had the opportunity, I would get one too. I'm not going to yeah. yeah. you know, pay crazy money for it, but if I saw it at a decent price, I'd probably jump on it too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Chris Tats has, says, ask him for the for, <laughs> ask him for the packing box as well. Uh, Eddie has said the 1984 was one of his favorites even before it was released. Interesting. 1894, I guess they meant. Yeah, yeah, 18. I'm sorry, yeah, 1894, not 1984. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did we did we see a, a super chat count, or am I kind of in the dark here? Um, 
I don't see a number yet. I can tell you that this 13 year here that's 86 proof. Yep. This to me is what 1894 should have been. This thing's killer. And there is no way that there is just 13 year whiskey in here. I mean, I, I'm thinking there's probably 15 to 17 year old whiskey in here easily. Okay, perfect. I've noticed, uh, let's see. Oh, does Bourbon Battalion got it? Is he keeping track of the numbers? Let's see here. Cheech, I just made you a, a mod as well. Um, um, Deborah Cohen says she won it all. <laughs> all right. All right, Bobby, we're waiting for you. I know, is he texting it to me? Sometimes he'll just message me here. Let's see. Um, I'd love to, I, I need to have that conversation with Eddie. One reason why I've never talked to him about 1894 is because I've always been kind of afraid to talk to him about it because <laughs> my review wasn't so kind. So, um, you know, I, I've just never brought that up, but, uh, it'd be interesting to know what, what he really thinks of it. Uh, what is, uh, has he mentioned like what his favorite, what his favorite master's keep is? Like just personally, has he ever said it? Not that I've not not that I can think of off the top of my head. I haven't asked him that question. I know that he said, you know, that the original seventeen year was the most unique wild turkey bourbon ever released, and and there's a lot of truth to that because of the maturation taking place at the uh, the old old Taylor, you know, stone uh, rick houses. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I mean, my gut would uh, he put a lot into revival. Um, I would like to think that revival is pretty high up on his list. I mean, he did put a lot. I mean, the, the fact that he traveled for that, picked those barrels, right. Those, those casts were, I mean, he almost walked. I mean, when we, he had that, uh, I, I mentioned to you earlier about the, the webinar that he hosted, the zoom webinar. Uh, he talked about how he almost just walked completely because he went over to Spain and he spent all day tasting, uh, from different sherry casks and he just never found one that spoke to him. And he was literally about to get back on the plane. And the guy's like, hold up, hold up. I, I got one more place I want to take you. Yeah. And uh, that's when Eddie went and found the cast that would eventually become the cast that would hold the bourbon that would become rival. I mean, revival. And, uh, you know, it's it was a really neat story to hear. Uh, and so I'd like to think that's pretty high up on his list. Um, all right. So Bobby says he has, yeah, he had it. He thinks he has 48 names. So. We have cool. That's a lot of super chats. A lot of super chats. Um, I'm just making sure that he has the names to go along with it, not just the numbers. He says, okay, we can go with the 48. I think 48 is accurate. Okay, so he's on it. All right, so let's pick our first number. Uh, let me go here. Pick a number between 1 and 48. Forty-two is the first number, so forty-two is going to win the Russell Reserve store pick. This is a ten-year-old store pick. It's delicious, and I'm kind of it is. I'm kind of sad. I'm giving it away now. Now that all these ten years are going away now, so just saying. But I'm giving it away because I love you guys. Uh, so, Bobby, who do we have in the chat? Uh, that's gonna. That's number forty-two. Uh, Bobby, put it in the actual chat room so everybody could see it. Let's see? Um, so that's be the first one. Um, let me grab... Uh, let's see here. Oh. Oh, shit. Are you serious? Number, 40, uh, number 43 was Hank Butts. So Hank Butts is the winner. Congrats, Hanks. Congrats, Hank. So Hank Butts, congratulations, Hank! You're gonna win. You win the uh, the Russell's uh, store pick. That's absolutely delicious. There it is, Bourbon Battalion, Hank Butts. Congrats, Hank! All right, next one, we're gonna do the uh, Master Jump Curved Bourbon Glass, and you get a sample of each of these two uh, very special uh, Wild Turkey bottles. So you're gonna get a sample of each of those to go along with the Master Jump Curved Bourbon Glass. Uh, so let's go again. 
Actually, you know what? Uh, well, David, why don't you pick a number between 1 and 48? What's your favorite? Pick, a, pick one of your favorite numbers. Go for it. Uh, let's say 33. 33. 33. Bourbon Battalion, who is 33? Hank Butt says, thanks, everyone. I am so happy. <laughs> Hank, Congrats, Hank. Uh, Hank, you have my uh, my email. Just uh, send me your uh, your uh, your address, and I will get this out to you as soon as I can. So thirty three. Who do we got from Bourbon Battalion? That is thirty three. Tom R says thirty three is me. We're waiting to confirm that, Tom. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure, absolutely. Congrats, Hank. That's awesome, man. Hank's a good friend of the show. He's always. Uh, we talk uh, actually through email a good amount. So let's see here. Bourbon Battalion says, give me a sec. All right. So he's waiting on that. So as far as, uh, as far as like wild turkey expressions go, I think from my standpoint, I've, I've been seeing, like we said a little bit, we touched on a little bit before, just a lot more people interested in, in uh in wild turkey and, and i think the more people are getting educated about the different rick houses and the different flavor profiles that are throughout those um i think people are getting a little bit turned on to it through not only rare breed but russell's reserve single barrel as well i mean you mentioned rare breed has been in some states it's becoming a little bit harder to find which i That's find right. which i find amazing yeah i mean it's talked about a lot on reddit um uh, youtube you yep. see a lot more Instagram posts with rare breed. Um, of course, you have some big attention coming from folks like Fred Minnick. So that doesn't surprise me at all that rare breed uh, is becoming allocated. Yep. Um, you know, it, the good news is that they keep making it. It's not It's not like some annual release like Pappy or something. Yeah, um, for sure. But, you know, th there's going to be a lot of people that are going to buy it up and try to flip it and this type of stuff, which is ridiculous. But... I hope that doesn't happen with rare breed. That'll be that'll be a sad day in bourbon when rare definitely. Breed I guess what I would say is, if that does happen, then just start buying handles of one hundred and one and just yeah. you know ride out the storm. <laughs> Ethan Turr says bourbon. I actually ran off with all the samples. Womp womp. <laughs> Come on, Bobby. Where you at? Where is it? Thirty three. What's the number? <laughs> Uh, oh, oh shit, Deborah Cohen. There you go. There you go, Deborah. Deborah Congrats. Cohen. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, so Deborah Cohen, congratulations, Deborah. You uh, you win and mash and drum, curved bourbon glass, and two samples, a sample each of these uh, these two hitters of uh, turkey bottles. Um, if uh, Deborah Cohen, please email me at the mash and drum at gmail.com. And uh, we'll we'll get in contact and get you your uh, get you your prizes sent to you. Congrats, Deborah. Yeah, definitely. Congrats. Uh, oh, there's Deborah still in the chat. She's hanging out. Awesome. There she goes. Told you. <laughs> she knew she was winning. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna pick a number now. Uh, I'm gonna pick uh, my favorite baseball player of all time, number 18, Daryl Strawberry, on the New York Mets. Um. Number 18. Who is number 18, Bourbon Battalion? This will be for Bobby's Rare Breed Rye. So, uh, Bobby, when you uh, pick this number, number 18, this is going to go for the Rare Breed Rye. So, uh, let's see here. Bourbon Battalion says, Ugh. Why are you saying Ugh, man? Just look at the number. Give me a name. What do we got? <laughs> go Mets. <laughs> Are you a you a baseball fan, David? Not really, but I, I will say I read a very interesting story about Ben Affleck refusing to wear a New York Yankees cap uh, for uh, Gone Girl, the movie Gone Girl, and it actually they had to stop production of the movie for two weeks, I think, while his agent negotiated with the movie company, uh, and he finally compromised and wore a New York Mets cap. Because he's a Boston fan, and a Boston fan, he would he would yeah. not wear a Yankees cap to, to 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 any for anything for any amount of money, and I was like, this is insane. So the dude would not wear a cap in character. I'm like, really? This is 
yeah. anyway, so thought it was very interesting. Well, I mean, listen, my mother's the same way. She is a diehard Yankees fan. If you even show her a picture of anything Boston Red Sox, <laughs> she will literally just throw up on your shoes. <laughs> yeah, that's serious. Strawberry, are you nuts? That's right, man. When I was growing up, Daryl Strawberry was – listen, I was young. I was I was too young to, you know – you know, learn about all the cocaine, all the other crap that was going on with him. He was just my favorite player growing up. Uh, yeah, he, sweetest swing in baseball history. I would say it's between him and also Ken Griffey Jr. had a pretty sweet swing. Um, I'll take Gary Sheffield swing over Strawberry. Gary Sheffield didn't swing. He, I don't know what you call him. He had he had like the most violent swing in baseball. His swing was insane. Um, <laughs> I like this, Kevin Bro. That's wicked dumb, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to look it up, but I, I mean, I read it the other day, and I was like, "This is yeah. insane." Yes, that's true. And Jack Nicholas, uh, Jack Nicholas refused to for the Red Sox cap in The Departed. Uh, ben Affleck equals douche. Go Yanks. <laughs> but look, they can only do this because they're already established actors. If you were a new actor, you would wear that cap in a heartbeat if you wanted to have another movie. Yeah. So, Wait, Bourbon Battalion, is that Stahl? Does that mean Ben Stahl won? Was he number 18? Is that what you're saying? Stahl? Ben Stahl? Oh, Mike Stahl. Mike Stahl. Congrats, buddy. Awesome. So Mike Stahl wins the uh, Rare Breed Rye from Bourbon Battalion. Cool. Uh, Bobby, you should probably, you know, get in touch with Mike and make sure you can uh, you can grab that uh, that bottle from Mike. All right, next we're going to give away the, uh, the Pop Em, Don't Watch Em sample pack of all the Masters Keeps. Cool. All right, so we're going to do that. Um, all the U.S. Masters Keeps. All the, yeah, all the U.S. Masters Keeps. Yeah, that's the caveat, so... Um, all right, so I'm going to pick up the next number here. Okay, I'll do this one random here. Pick a random number between 1 and 48. Fifteen. Fifteen is the number. Fifteen. Who do we got, Bobby? Bobby, who is 15? Keith Hernandez's epic mustache to the win. Yeah, I mean, I was in love with the whole team. Gary Carter signed a ball for me. Um, he was like my favorite catcher ever. Um, uh, I mean, Howard Johnson, we called him Hojo, Lenny Dykstra. That whole team was a mess. One of the best books you should ever read is uh, um, what's that? What the hell is that Mets book that I have? The year, the year, the uh, it was like the year the the worst guys in baseball won or something like that. It's a great book. The year, the uh, let's see, the year. Bad Boys won it all or something like that. For what the hell is it? Um, oh, the bad guys won. Yeah, the bad guys won a season of brawling. That was one of the best. Um, one of the best books. If you like, if you're into, if you're a New York Mets fan, it's a great book. I mean, there was so much shit that happened in the back end of that. It was crazy. Um, let's see here. We always went to Braves Braves games when I was a kid. So yeah. Dale Murphy was a big, big one to watch when I was younger. So oh yeah, Dale Murphy. Yeah. Well, let's see. Bourbon Battalion says working on it. Uh, oh, Bobby Bonilla. We're, the Mets are never going to let down, live down Bobby Bonilla. Um. Let's see. Did somebody say epic mustache? Actually, Kilko does have an epic mustache. Uh, that was an awesome book. Oh, Scott's back in here for my bourbon journey. Oh, yeah, the 69 Mets. Yeah, those guys. Cheers, Scott. The Astros right now are the bad guys, that's for sure. My bourbon journey says I was a Mattingly guy. Oh, dear Lord. Mattingly. Damn, ma damn Yankees. <laughs> oh, yeah, Piazza. For sure. Wasn't Mattingly? I thought he was like on Boston's. Yeah. Wasn't he for a Boston Red Sox for a while? I can't remember. I can't keep track of all this. So the next winner is Sugar Kitty. Awesome, Sugar Kitty. So Sugar Kitty wins the next giveaway. Uh, she wins the the uh, the Masters Keep Vertical, the U.S. Masters Keep Vertical. 
So congrats to Sugar Kitty. That's congrats. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, congrats. Uh, you know, she always tells me to stay vertical and not fall on my ass. So I really appreciate that. She's always watching out for me, Sugar Kitty. I appreciate it. So, uh, so we have one more giveaway, and that's going to be Sunday evening scotches, uh, Russell's Reserve single barrel giveaway. Uh, let's see here. Wade Boggs, that's it. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, I think in Wade Boggs. That's okay. It. Yes. I, yeah. I can't keep track of this stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Let's do, the, uh, let's do the last giveaway here. So pop them, don't watch them. Uh, hopefully you're still watching. Please reach out or Sugar Kitty. Let them, let them, you know, let let her know how to get in touch with you. Pop them, don't watch them, so you can, so she can claim her prize. And last but not least, let's go here. Um, pick a random number between one and forty-eight. Fifteen. We already did fifteen, jerk. Pick again. 14. <laughs> 14. <laughs> it's so random. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick my other favorite. That was, that was done in spite, but go yeah, ahead. Spite. I'm going to pick uh, – uh, you know, I just watched the, the Michael Jordan documentary again, so let's do 23. So uh, Bourbon Battalion, let's pick 20. 23 was actually my football number too. So let's do 23 for the last giveaway. That will be for the Sunday evening scotch. So 23, who do we got? 23, 23. Yes, congrats, Sugar, Sugar Kitty. So Bourbon Battalion, who do we got for the last giveaway? Uh, let's see. Bourbon Battalion says he's on it. So 23 would be the win. Uh, have you watched the, uh, the, the Last Dance on Netflix? I haven't. Uh, I know a lot of folks uh, enjoyed it, but I have not found the time to do that. I, I don't get a, a lot of free time to watch anything, so I wasted four hours of my life on the yeah. Zack Snyder Justice League the other night. I'm like, oh, I watched that too, man. I mean, it was, it was, it was better than the original one. I'll give it that, but it just, it still wasn't a great movie. <laughs> I mean, I, I liked it uh, a lot better than the original. Um, I actually thought the uh, I thought the way they 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 created um, who the hell was the bad guy? What the hell's his name? Uh, uh, Steppenwolf or yeah, Dark Side or whatever. Yeah, the way they they kind of redid Steppenwolf, I thought was a lot more. I don't know. He was just like darker and more evil looking than the one they did in the regular movie, which was great. He was it. it it just still wasn't. I mean, I guess I was expecting more out of it than I got. And I was like, oh, well, that was four hours gone. So, yeah. Yeah. I was going to watch it until I saw it was four freaking hours. Yeah. They actually break it into like episodes almost. Right. And that's what I, I watched it that way. Yeah. Did you like part one? You watched that. And then part two. I it's watched it in like, you know, over it's three or four it's runs. It's impossible to watch, you know, you know, throughout the whole thing. Um, Kilko comes in with the win. Nice. So Kilko, you need to reach out to Sunday evening scotch. You can probably find, um, you can probably find Mike on Instagram and claim your single barrels. Sweet. That's awesome. Glad Kilko is, uh, getting some whiskey. Uh, number 14 gets a copy of the home game. All right. So for shits and giggles, you know, who was number 14? Just let me know who number 14 was, Bobby. I'm just curious because I did kind of bypass 14 because it was so close to 15. I did. I messed with Destiny. Uh, 14, whoever wins 14, just email me and we'll, uh, I don't know, I'll send you some kind of cool turkey pack to make up for it or a glass if you want. I could send you a mash and drum glass if you'd like. Um. Yeah, MJ, MJ. So if you even if you don't like basketball, David, that that uh, that documentary, The Last Dance, it really like gives you a view on how nuts Michael Jordan was. I mean, the guy would make up shit in his head to give him like a competitive edge over anyone. I mean, it was nuts. I was, I mean, complete alpha animal, whatever you want to call him. He was. He would kill you to to win a basketball game. It was amazing. It's kind of on my short list to watch. Uh, a good one that I ended up finding time to watch. This was maybe two years ago. 
was the uh, Andre the Giant documentary on HBO. That was killer. Oh, I gotta, I gotta definitely watch that. Yep, I've heard that's pretty good. It was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, the last dance will make you want to slow motion kick someone in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I have to watch it. Bourbon Battalion says it was me. Are you serious? <laughs> Bourbon Battalion 14, it was you? Okay. Well, I can I can send you something, uh, Bobby. It's only well, we'll Bobby and I will hang out. He's actually here in uh, in Ohio, but <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, I didn't win the giveaway, and I took it personally. And I took that personally. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Um, the Tiger Woods documentary on HBO is fantastic, too. Oh, yeah, that's another good one. I actually watched that. Uh, I actually watched that a couple times, um, the Tiger Woods one. That, one. that one kind of blows your mind, how he grew up and the way he grew up and how his father, like, built him from the outside in and pretty much – as soon as he was born, he's like, you're going to be a golfer and turn him into like this golfing machine. Um, and then obviously the stuff they get into on the second part with, you know, the, uh, you know, the marital affairs he had and all the women and all that other stuff. I mean, crazy, crazy stuff. I, I could see that being interesting. I guess I just, I, it's just finding free time is so difficult. Oh, okay. No, I know. I hear you. You're always late sitting in bed writing. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Whiskey knows I'm still waiting for my autograph bottle, JC. I got I got it coming, man. Um, fun fact, Tiger's dad went to school here. Oh, okay. Uh Tiger Woods crashed his car. Tiger need a new driver ride. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh Bobby didn't win either. He just took it personally and said it was him. Okay. All right. Well, I think uh, I think we got everything done tonight, guys. So, um, yeah, please, if you haven't yet, guys, hit the like button. Uh, I want to thank, obviously, David for coming on, hanging out with us and uh, and, you know, talking turkey with Bo. Hopefully next time, like you said, man, we're going to do this on site. I think that would be awesome. I think that, you know, that way we could get everything like it needs to be. It's yeah. difficult when you try to do all these things live with internet issues, that type of thing. But folks yeah. are used to it now, especially over the last year. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I agree. Um, but that's kind of like, hey, listen, it's like we tried so hard to have make this happen. We rolled the dice, you know. Uh, we got to talk with him. We got to see the still. We got to talk with Bo a little bit. So um, I think overall I was still happy with it. I'm glad you were, you were sure. there on to kind of talk some history too and – um, congrats to all the winners. Thanks for dealing with me for two episodes today, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, for everyone that hung out, even when the internet dropped, uh, I can't say thanks enough to all the support you guys, uh, you know, give me, especially from the chat. So, um, that's it. This was, uh, this was a lot of front, a lot of fun. Um, all right. Who did the two down votes? You always get down votes. They probably didn't have the internet issue. <laughs> Man, don't even don't even worry about that stuff. You get, they get internet, you get internet issues and you automatically get a thumbs down. It's gonna happen. Yeah, but, don't uh, worry about it. Don't yeah. sweat it. You have a great yeah. show. It was still a great fun show. It was a lot of impromptu stuff that we deal with. It was a lot of fun, man. It was it was a good time. So uh for all you turkey heads out there, thanks for tuning in. As I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers, and we'll see you next time on the Master Drum. Take care, everybody. Cheers.